This is Arabic tobacco. You ever tried this before? I can barely hit a vape pen without vomiting. It's illegal. You can buy this at a gas station. It's gas station up. drugs are the best. <laughs> All right, you hit it. No, okay, here's the thing. First. It's no fun if I hit it first, because then you know what you're going to feel. Out of here. Oh. How many bite people got set up with that one? <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Are you gonna hit? Come no, on. I'm not gonna hit it. Boo. I don't care if you boo. I don't care. Gali, gali chore. India chore. Come on, just take one it little hit of the maduach. <laughs> oh. All right, what, what's going on here, boys? Cozy, guys. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant. We just got back from Abu Dhabi, mm. okay? Uh, for some reason, <clears throat> Tanya and Dove are still there. We're, we're still figuring out <laughs> yeah. what the issue with that is. We're doing yeah. our best to get them back over. They had some more questions for them while they were yeah. there. Yeah, what do you think that was? They I, I don't know. We had to start a podcast. We mm -hmm. had to. We, you know, we were already probably a day late on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apologies, but um, but but we're here, and you know, we're in touch with the embassies and everything, and we're going to hope that that they'll be back. <laughs> um, so in the meantime, if you have any questions about Israel Palestine, now is the time to ask, <laughs> and we'll get to the bottom of it. No, no, we're out in uh, Abu Dhabi and. Uh, in Dubai, it, that's the last destination. Obviously, we all, we did the European tour as well, and uh, it was it was awesome, man. It was the show in Abu Dhabi was insane. Really, it was insane, and I didn't edit anything. Re that's what I wanted to ask. How were they about flagrancy? Oh, they were loving it. There was really? one joke that I was concerned about, mm -hmm. and I don't want to say it, but I'm sure if Obviously. anybody's seen the Life Tour, they probably are aware of it. And uh, there was one joke. Uh, and in the moment, I was like, I don't know. Yeah, and I yeah, was like, yeah. fuck it, I'll just do it. And they fucking exploded. Really? Whoa, 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 whoa. Not yes. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good point. <laughs> Good point. Good, okay. now, they exploded. There's no more anti out of Be more sensitive. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It was, it was crazy. And, uh, and yeah, the Emirates is, is just, it's really interesting. Like everybody there, like all the locals, they went to school in America somewhere. Or they went to school in England. Mm. So like they're fluent. English yeah. is perfect, and they are aware of all, like, the cultural stuff. Like, they've yeah. experienced the cultural stuff. So, like, it was probably, that was probably our most fluent American audience. Really? In American culture. In American culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. London as well, but I was shocked because I think we all went into it going, I don't know yeah. what they're going to find funny. I don't know what's going on. You also have the guys in the robes, the condoras they're called. Like, so you're thinking, okay, are they going to get all these things? But all those dudes went to school in America, and they didn't go to school in, like, New York. <laughs> they went to school in like Alabama, yeah. uh, Cookville, Tennessee. Tennessee, Arkansas. Like, so they're really aware of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was fucking, it was fun. I didn't edit anything. And Fire. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. Yeah, I'll get hit up sometimes. Be like, hey, you got to come to Dubai to do a show, and I'm like, no, that seems crazy. What would I do? That seems dangerous. Yeah. And they will always say, no, you don't get it. it we're way more down than you think. And yeah, it's they, cool to know. Man. Yeah, it was far. It was, I think way more cool. down. Like they, because they don't get it necessarily. That's like, yeah, like yeah. they don't get that type of thing. Not that many people go there, and the people that do go there, I think, go in with this conception. They're, they're terrified. Like, oh, this is like a very conservative Muslim country. Like yeah. you can't do the certain things you would normally do. And so I think people probably button it up. Whereas they're like, yo, we... And they also tell you, like, there's like five different versions of what you can or can't say. Okay. You know, the promoters are saying one thing, but the promoters might be from outside of the Emirates. Mm -hmm. So they're worried about their reputation. So they're right. like, don't touch about these things. And then you talk to the people there on that side. They're like, yeah, yeah kind of, you know, say whatever you want. Like, they're like, listen, don't trash Islam. That's not a good idea. But, you know, have jokes, do whatever. And, um, but the audience is like, I mean, like women hijabis, women in the hijab mm. just fucking dying laughing and yeah, flaming yeah. jokes. So it was like, <laughs> it was very cool. That's people so cool. are people, bro. Yeah. People are people. They just like jokes. It was funny, but it's And it's yeah, to what you said, I do think there's a thing where the more like constrictive a culture is, the more the comedy club is the haven. Yes. Where everybody can come laugh. Like, it's different, but we talk about Portland. And you'll say, like, the audiences love the offensive jokes because outside, none of that is allowed. Yeah. So we go to this place where and now, oh, oh, I can finally hear it. Let's go. I'm dying. Especially if it's, like, if it's with love. Yeah. You did a good job, though. You didn't go up and just be like, hey, here are my jokes. You, yeah, no. Nah, the first 15 minutes, he's talking about deep cut. Like, I'm sure you're going to put clips out from it, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, you're talking about, like, deep cut things that, like, you only know if you grew up in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Like, even people from Dubai were like, oh, wait, how? Like, yeah, it's yeah. so nuanced. It's so niche. There's a guy sitting in front of us at the show while we were watching. And the whole time, he's just like, 
how does he know this? <laughs> like he's like touching the people next to him. He's like, how, like how did he figure this out? Yeah. Like yeah. He's, he's like speaking in Arabic words that they were like, this is insane. Yeah. So you did a good job of like being inserted into the culture. And I think like if they see that, then then they know that you're not coming there just judging them and you know basically criticizing all their shit that's different from yours. They're like, yeah. oh, okay, you took a little second to right. you know, absorb what's going on. And then I think they give you, you know, the longest leash. The you know they're, they're the most open about anything else you say mm -hmm. because you're not coming through with that critical lens. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, the intention is good. He took the time to learn about us. Yeah, yeah. Like it was some. Yeah, it was fun. So I'll put some clips out for it. But there's yeah, there's some fun. There's some fun shit. It was fire, bro. Our hotel in Abu Dhabi was literally in the middle of the F1 track. Yeah. Holy shit! So I saw you guys in the F1 built, track. And like, I'll, there's a bat. My bathroom that where I would take a shit. I look out the window, and that's where the F1 car <laughs> yeah. and everything go. And we got on the fucking F1 yeah, track. Yeah, that was fire. That was crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Instead of roosters, you just hear Rearm, and I wake you up. Literally, literally, literally. Yeah. Literally, yeah. yeah. You think it's awesome, and you get there like, dude, we're on the track. And then like 10 a.m., it's just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We could move the schedule a little bit. Yeah, but dude, it was so cool. Yeah, Are we allowed to share some of the people that came to the show? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what the rule with that is, but before the show starts, there's one of the promoters that's there, and I'm going through all my jokes, being like, "Is any of this funny? Is any of this gonna work? Do they know what this means at all?" I'm like so stressed. I'm only doing like 12, 15 minutes, but I'm just like so, so anxious. And I talk to the promoter, and she looks super nervous. And I'm like, "Wait, what's, what's going on?" And she's like, "Well, um, uh, one, one of the the members of the royal family uh, that's uh, a little bit higher up in the family than we anticipated uh, showed up tonight. Fuck. And uh, we didn't anticipate them to be here. We expected some of like the lower levels of the family to be here. Did you know this? Yeah. We didn't oh, tell okay. them. No one told because yeah, yeah, we're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, this yeah, is an issue. Yeah. And so they're like, yeah, you know, one of the members of the royal family. And again, United Arab Emirates is controlled by." And basically one royal family. Like all every different emirate has a royal family like kingdom. Basically seven different tribes that got organized by one guy. Yeah. Okay. Right. And that guy was from Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. Abu Dhabi's where all the, the real money is. Yeah. They have oil still, they have gas still. Dubai doesn't have any oil or gas. And their whole bet in Dubai was, yo, let's turn it into like a tourism hub because we're gonna run out of the oil and gas. But originally these were all their individual tribes and they're organized by uh, Zaid. What's his name? Uh Sheikh Zaid. Sheikh Zaid. And uh and he convinced a bunch of these other tribes to lock in. Now, there's a few that didn't. I don't think Oman decided not to. They're like, we'll do our own it's thing. It's like Stringer Bell for oil. Right, exactly. Cut, Qatar yeah. and Bahrain. Qatar and Bahrain, they decided not to, but then the other ones got down. But so yeah. we're sitting there, I'm talking to the girl. I'm like, okay, on level like one being like the biggest dude and 10 being like a lower level person, like what would you rate it? She was like, uh, probably like three or four. Oh, fuck. And so yeah. we're like, Okay. Yeah. And yeah, so we're yeah. going through the jokes. Like he's going through jokes. Like, should I say this one? Should I do this one? And then no one says I don't says know anything. if it's going to be expats or locals. Yeah. And by locals, that means you have to be born as an Emirati. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not born there. Like you have to be part of the An expat people who move from the U.S. too, right? No. Okay. The opposite. So you have to be like from there. You're a tribal from yeah. there. And then an expat that moves there is not considered a local. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. And I was, an expat is someone who comes from somewhere else. Yes, 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 yes. So yes, then yes. we do the show. The show's amazing. Then afterwards, the promoter like kind of comes up to Dove and Andrew and they're like, um, members of the royal family would like to meet you. Crazy. And what are you thinking in this moment? Because you didn't even know they were there. Anybody I see in the Condora, I assume, is the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> it's really amazing. Like, no, it's, it's, it's an amazing way that like when everybody puts on the outfit, you just kind of assume. So you don't know. And the royal doesn't get like a stick or anything to let you know that there's, stick. you know what I mean? Yeah, or like a yeah, crown yeah. or anything like that. So it's actually kind of cool in that way where anybody you see is dressed the same. Mm -hmm. So the flex happens in another way, not just the clothing, mm -hmm. right? Where like obviously, you know, in, in America or something else, like we're flexing, right? Um, oh, they don't have a bunch of logos on there. But you would the think. Like you that. would think. Supreme Kandora. Yeah. So I was giving royal treatment to some bums probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing a Kandora. I'm like, what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> bro, it's nerve wracking. They're like, yeah, the rules are going to come back. We're not allowed to say no to them if they want to meet you. Like, that's kind of the rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, Imagine uh, saying no. Yeah, yeah so, I'm good. So I'm good. They're coming back right now. And uh, yeah, they would like to speak with you. And then the dude comes back and what happens? I think, yeah, I think that. I, yeah, I think it was just, it was vibes. It was fun. Yeah, the yeah. nicest yeah. guy. He's like a 20 year old dude, super sweet, huge fan of comedy, loves Schultz, had the best time at the show. Brought all his boys, and we just had it, it. It was just, yeah, it was fun. And all of these things that I made up in my head of like, oh, they're gonna be this and conservative. They were just like, they're no. kids. We just like jokes. We just like hanging out with the boys. They're just so kids. Crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. We went out to get some food. They're like, hey, do you want to come back to our palace and play FIFA? <laughs> and we're this like, is Mark's dream, dude. Bro, immediately. Yeah, we would. We would like to do that. I started That's instigating like a lot yeah. of fun. I started instigating, dude. We were talking shit. 
I was like, dude, I'm gonna wash you in FIFA. If I beat you in FIFA, I get citizenship. I'm gonna sports yeah. wash you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, it was crazy. It was so fun. And then he had one of the most insane comebacks in FIFA history. Oh yeah, I couldn't let them beat me, bro. You can't do that, dude. I mean, he beat me, but it, it, it was penalty kicks. Bro. Penalty it was kicks. penalty kicks. It was penalty kicks. Wait, you were bragging about a loss here? But it was a good comeback, though. Okay, okay. that's a Schultz win. Schultz <laughs> <laughs> win, bro. That that is, is a Schultz yeah, win. It is a Schultz win right there. <laughs> no, nah, it was just fun. Like it was, it was cool. Like learning little things about the spot. Like, like I didn't understand the whole license plate shit. Have you heard about no. this thing where like license plates are incredibly expensive there? No. So, so like, the smaller the number, it's like. Yeah. Uh, okay. The higher they are, or or it's just more expensive. Oh, okay. Right, and it's like if you buy up, someone bought number three for like ten million dollars or some shit like that. Yeah. And I was like, yo, what's the deal with this? Because I didn't understand it. I was like, this seems like such a flagrant waste of money. And uh, one of the kids was like, yo, when everybody has a G wagon, like it ain't a flex. Yeah. Mm. And people are gonna find their ways to flex yeah. outside of just having a G wagon. So it's the license plate number. And then then he was like, and now what's happening is if if people don't want you to know who they are, they buy a shitty number. Mm -hmm. So if you got real money, the way of kind of like making your identity a little bit more obscure is to not have the low number. And is that its own flex? Like people who buy designer clothes in America and they're like, I don't want the logo on it at all. Yeah. yeah. Whereas when you first get money, you're like, I want the logo everywhere. You yeah. Know, I got this. And you gotta say, like, they are first getting money. We're yeah. talking about like they've been, you know, rich for 50 years. Yeah. yeah. They've only been a country for like 70. Yeah. 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 So like they're still learning how to deal with money, what to spend it on, where you invest, like what kids are gonna do with their life. Yeah. Like it's just, I don't know, it was just a very interesting thing. I had I had no expectation really going in into it. I was like, okay, it's just gonna be big glitz, glamor, hotels are crazy, That's super right. flex, awesome. et cetera. And then just getting into like the nuances of the culture I thought was kind of cool. Can you explain that some, some people had a license plate more expensive than the car? Like some people had a oh, Nissan. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they told me that like back in the day, that during the war, like they sided with uh, uh, Kuwait, I guess, against Iraq. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy who had like the Nissan dealership rights in the country basically like gave the army Nissans. So now Nissan is like a beloved brand mm. there. So everybody gets these Nissans, and as a way to just you know show respect. But then you put the super high license plate on it, so you let people know, like, yo, I don't have to have a Nissan. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean. I got it. And uh, <clears throat> bro, they were saying like dating is wild. Like you can't just take a girl to your house because obviously it's strict Muslim rules. Like mm -hmm. your mom is gonna tell their mom. There's only a million Emiratis. So uh, what they do is they'll like have their first dates and they'll fuck in like mall parking lots. <laughs> so you basically get the SUV that can get folded back uh, and then you go to a mall parking lot and that's your fucking date. And you can't go to the hotel because every hotel you got to show your ID and that will get back to mom and pops. Uh, yeah, 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 so they yeah, got to yeah. find all these workarounds for the system that's when so they're funny. not banging out Russian hookers and shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it was cool. Bro, it was awesome. Yeah. Chamakis, can you explain that? Yeah, I don't like, even know do how I want to get into it. Yeah, man, we'll put out all the clips and everything like that. But, but yeah, it was really cool. I'm excited for everybody to see it. But it was it was good that I think that was like our last stop. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really it was really fun. And it was an arena. Like we watched the UFC fight in the same place the night before. Holy shit! Yeah, that was dope too. UFC fight was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys watch that fight? I did. Yeah, I, saw that I fight did. Too. The thoughts. I mean, uh, Volk took the fight on such short notice. Yeah, I, I just hope he's doing okay. I love him. It was obviously we hate to see him lose, but yeah. it was just like fuck, dude. I hate that he took that fight on such short notice. Yeah. Yeah, and he was very transparent in the uh, post-fight interview. I don't know if you saw it. No, I didn't. But see he was it. getting a little emotional. He was just like, "Hey, man, you know, in between fights, like I didn't have a fight, and I was kind of doing my head in." Like, and he goes, "And I know I shouldn't. Like, I have a beautiful family, and I have my lovely children, and everything. But it was still really hard for me. So I like to stay busy. But it was. I think he was like explaining something that a lot of athletes probably go through. Yeah, which is you know, dealing with the fact that you're not happy when you have everything you want." Mm -hmm. You're recognized as one of the greatest to ever do it. You have a beautiful family, you have beautiful children, you have money, and you're still kind of struggling. Yeah. And uh, and him taking the fight, I think that was like part of that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I need this goal. I need something yeah. to work towards. I need to be mm -hmm. in the game. And um, having him like open up about that. That's very cool. He was like almost like tearing up. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's beautiful. very cool. But um, yeah, so it was a bummer to see him lose. And then Kamaru, I thought Kamaru beat. Yeah. Uh, I thought he won. I, th I had a 2 1. Really? Mm. I didn't think he won, but I thought it was a great fight. I thought, yeah. yeah, yeah, or 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 even. Yeah, I had him winning the second rounds, and then obviously Chamaya winning the first round, and the third round could have gone, yeah. could have gone even. But like Kamara was starting to get the better of him. 
Yeah, I thought if he'd gone five rounds, I again, I don't know much. I thought uh, I thought Kamar lost the third round, but I think if it had gone five, he would have won. Yeah, I mean, he was coming on. Yeah. yeah. Watching I mean, it on TV, could you guys hear Andrew screaming, he don't want it, he don't want it from... from, from Maev's like, dad is like three rows behind me. <laughs> the second the decision gets announced, his dad is like laser beam eye or uncle or somebody goes... In fucking Russian. I don't know what the hell he's like. <laughs> <laughs> like, and no smile, nothing. Yeah, they don't fuck around. Dead serious. Yeah. Didn't yeah. say nothing during the fight, though. Because he was waiting. <laughs> because he wasn't confident. Yeah. <laughs> but you know who won me over? Chimaev won me over, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, afterwards. Even the embrace they had afterwards was Beautiful. great. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Like, and he was, I, I think he's one of those dudes where it's like, he's a very nice, sweet, sensitive, like kind person mm -hmm. that happens to be one of the most talented people on the planet at hand-to-hand -hand combat murdering yeah. people. Mm -hmm. And like, it, like that whole culture is like that. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. Kind, yeah. thoughtful, sweet. Nobody's an asshole. Nobody's, they understand yeah. what they have to do to like sell the fights. Yeah. Which is kind of like antithetical to how they're raised. Mm -hmm. So they do it to sell the fights. Yeah. But outside of that, Na like naturally humble. Humble, chill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was fucking, it was really cool. The energy was really cool. Yeah. Your twin was cool. Was Zlatan. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That's insane, dude. Bro, I go up to <laughs> meet. Knew. I saw right. Zlatan, right? I go up to meet. You know Zlatan? Yeah, yeah. I remember we posted that clip yeah. about the LeBron James jersey, where yeah. LeBron sends him a jersey, signs it back, sends it to him. I go up to me and I was like, hey, man, I just want to say hello. Like, a, you know, a big fan. Really appreciate you. And he, he looks up to me. He goes, you like that jersey thing, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you That's saw so it? That's so crazy. Of course I saw it. And I was like, dude, I love it. He goes, yes, if he come to, to me with the jersey, obviously I don't do this. I give him a jersey we train, but to mail me a jersey, not to the person. <laughs> Who does he think he is? <laughs> <laughs> That's so fire. Bro, That's so fire. Yeah, it was amazing. Bro, he is Zlatan the whole time. Oh, Even like yeah. as we were leaving, Dove was like, oh, you should come do stand up. And he's like, oh, you'd be lucky if I showed up to the show. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. no, 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 wait. <laughs> Hold on. We offered to come on the podcast, and he's like, why, why? Why would you do this? You have to give him something that he hasn't done. And we're like, look, open up for Schultz two minutes, and then his eyes lit up. Mm, maybe we work on this. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then he goes and starts speaking different languages. He says, I could do it in any language. He goes Italian. He goes, what else did he? Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, it was fire. Bro, legend. Yeah, it was cool. Just meeting Dana and Hunter and all the guys. It was it was really cool. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And shout out to Rogan, man, setting it up with the tickets, bro. That was that was vibes. Yeah. Go legend. Through. Yeah. We rolled deep. That's the other thing. We, we <laughs> rolled deep. Yeah. Like whenever I ask for tickets, it's an asshole thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> How many do you need is my least favorite question again. <laughs> because it's a lot. And then he 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 made it happen. It was really fucking cool. That's very cool. Announcement: the life tour is coming back to America. Okay, we announced the first three cities, Chicago, D.C., and Boston. We just added second shows in all three of those cities. Thank you guys so much for grabbing tickets. TheAndrewSchultz.com. Go there right now. Get those tickets before they're gone. And then Australia, the Life Tour is coming in a couple weeks. I'm incredibly excited. Uh, Perth, thank you so much for selling out the show. We added a second show, okay? Sydney, thank you so much for selling out the Super Away Theater. We added a second show. Um, Melbourne. That was insane. Show is officially sold out. Thank you so much. Where they play the fucking Australian Open. That's going to be unbelievable. Um, Brisbane, we just added more seats in the arena out there. Thank you guys so much. Adelaide, sold out. Thank you so much. Uh, go grab those tickets, whatever is left, and I'll see you guys there soon. And then some pretty cool announcements for the Life Tour back home in the States coming very soon. Stay tuned in for those. Peace. Also, guys, tour dates. This week, I'm going to be in Atlanta, October 27th through 29th. Then December 1st and 2nd, I'm going to be in Portland. You know you hate it there. You know you want to break from those fucking monsters in Antifa. Come to my comedy show because the rest of the city sucks. Also, December 8th, New Orleans, Louisiana. My first time ever performing there. Super hype about this. And this is important. December 17th through 19th, UK. We just added a second show, December 18th in London. Thank you guys for selling out the first show with two months to spare. So we're adding a second. Also, January 18th through 20th, I'm gonna be in DC. January 26th and 27th, Salt Lake City, Utah. Wise guys, get those tickets at akashsing.com. Wow, uh, awesome fight card. Let's go to another awesome fight card. You were at the Logan Paul fight. Yes! So that was awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah.
No. <laughs> yeah, was- yeah, I mean, the KSI Tommy Fury fight sucks, man. It was just so bad. Tommy Fury is really not good. Yeah. <laughs> He's like really bad. He's yeah. really bad at boxing. And like. Well, compared to what? I, at this point, we don't know, but like. Professional boxer. Yeah, compared yeah. to what he should be, which is a professional boxer. Mm-hmm. Especially like, when your brother's. According he comes him, from a legacy yeah. of like boxing. Like mm-hmm. he's just been around it his entire life. He should absorb it. Like, and listen, here's the thing. KSI has like this really weird style, which actually makes sense for how little he's been boxing. Mm-hmm. He has power and he has speed. So you curate a style that works for what you have. He's not gonna outbox a guy who's been boxing for 15 years by standing in front of him. You have to curate a style that maximizes the things that you do well. So he was doing this like karate kind of stance and really creating distance then lunging in. Tommy could do absolutely nothing to mitigate it. Yeah. Like there was no adjustment made. Like, What do you think the adjustment is? You beat him to the punch with a straight right. Okay. Or you get the jab going. He kind of stuck the jab a little bit and then kind of stopped, but no change happened. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Tommy probably won the fight. It was close, but it shouldn't be close. Yeah. Like, KSI's got 15 other fucking jobs. And I don't know why Tommy was, like, staying with the grab. Because that only helps KSI. Exactly. Like, like push him off you and, and box him. Yeah, but he it was, was just, like, so kept doing it. No, it was bad. Yeah. It, it was, was bad. That was a shitty fight to watch, and the other one was worse. And then, also it, a shitty actually, fight that was the only fight of the night, really. Yeah. Because yeah. the other <laughs> one wasn't really, you can't even call that a fight. Bro, I, the, the Logan fight went exactly how we thought. Yeah. It was a decision, Logan. And then, obviously, I didn't think that Dylan was going to outbox him. I thought Dylan would box. Yeah. I actually thought Dylan would win because he sat so confidently in this seat and was like, I'm fucking going. I thought he was going to do a little bit more of what he did. I, at least I called it. I knew he was going to do some UFC shit. To, yeah, 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 yeah that, that would yeah. figure Because I, I know he's like, hey, I don't want to take an L. So I'd be like, nah, nah, I stopped because I started fighting. Or uh, some, some like that. That's what I figured. But I didn't think he would not throw punches for yeah, that five was. and a half rounds or whatever. And then just try to, and even to get the takedown. Yeah. Which is also sad to watch. Yeah, that yeah. was sad. I mean, you got to give Logan credit for him not wanting to engage as much. Like, yeah. Logan boxed well. Logan mm-hmm. did box well. He was landing punches, and Dylan kept pressuring him the entire fight. Like, it's not like Dylan just sat in the corner or was running. Mm-hmm. Dylan kept pressing, but he couldn't get off. Nah, he couldn't get off. Logan's coach, you got to thank him because he was just throwing crazy punches in the beginning, if he would have stayed doing that, he would have tired out. He would have made a mistake. And that's what- Oh, and that's what, what Logan's th- coach said, chill. Yeah, Logan's coach is like, yeah. yo, chill, Don't make pick your spot. So, yeah. And that's yeah. what, he made that adjustment and it was a wrap. Yeah. yeah. Because Dylan was just hoping that he just got tired out. Yeah, and then he was going to land something yeah. big. Yeah. 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 Dylan wore those punches though. Like Bro, he, he, took, he took tough. big shots tough. and walked them down. Like yeah. that was impressive to me. I kind of expected that he wouldn't get knocked out, but like yeah. the level of shots that he took, even body shots, and just like kept on it walking. It just kept coming forward. Yeah, I just thought he would throw, I don't know, three punches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, three. you want him to be more active and throw more, but you got to give Logan credit for that. It's listen, if punches aren't landing on you, it's very easy to throw punches. But when they are landing on you, you're worried about that defense. Yeah. You're worried about getting caught. And he got caught in a second. I thought Logan was going to drop him in a second. This motherfucker ain't go down. You got to think Dylan's calculation, though, is don't get knocked out. Yeah. If you don't he, get knocked out, it's a His draw. win is not getting yeah. knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I, don't know. I didn't think fight. it was a win. He didn't fight. I thought, he, yeah, if he, I thought if he lost like a warrior, just based on the way he presented the fight, all right, cool, man. You went out. You got yeah. hit. You did your fucking thing. Just, just see, and I don't know much, but I just saw this weird defensive stance, didn't throw any punches, and that's where I was like, dude, what, do you, what is this? Uh, this is wasting my life. I'm 39. <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to live. This is life that I could be living. Yeah. Doing anything else, watching a blank screen. I'm not going to feel meditative. The he, Lo- he owes you 18 minutes. He, well, you owe me 18 minutes, though. <laughs> but the Logan, the Logan Danis fight was interesting and entertaining. The crowd was into it. Yeah. To you. No. Not to, to me. Everybody yeah. there. Yeah. Like the energy was the yeah. energy was insane to everybody there because there was ac- action. You have to understand. Like even if Dylan's just getting pounded by Logan, that's still what people are there to see. They're there to see a fight. The KSI Tommy fight was hugging the whole time. Yeah. Maybe a punch. Like, that was like beyond it's boring. So interesting. Yeah. You say that. It's probably just it's different being in the room because watching that on TV, it's like the Logan Dennis fight was boring as fuck. Really? Like, that's how, yeah, that's at yes. least with the KSI shit. It's like, all right, he's trying. He's right. not com- that's that's, good, but he's well, trying. So that's completely to, opposite yeah. in the, in the arena. Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. Snooze fest for the second one. People starting to look at their phones, what? like do other things, <laughs> like like booing, like. And again, this is their hometown, and it was just like, what the fuck is going on here? But Dylan Logan was like, big shots are getting landed. Oh wow! 
big. I see. I felt bored watching both. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I, but the, the second one was a bit more fun to it watch. It was more fun, yeah. but again, the hug. It was more frustrating than boring. Yeah. Because it was like any time there was action, hug, 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 hug. Yeah. And that was, I guess, frustrating and not boring. The Logan Dylan fight, I found myself bored. Again, maybe I just expected Dylan to throw, and I don't know boxing, so maybe I was an idiot who bought a whatever, got sold a bill of goods by Dylan. But like, I thought Dylan was gonna throw. Mm. Yeah. Logan it's threw. So interesting, like how it's so like how the narrative changed. Like the narrative was he won't even show up. Yeah, and that changed for you to well, why isn't he just going in there and beating the shit out? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because that's what he said. Right. He also said he was going to show up to the other fights and then didn't show yeah, up. Sure. So, so there was a narrative. Like even before he even came out, I was sitting there and Mike was next to me. He's like, "Do you think he's going to walk out?" Wow. So there was a moment even before hmm. the fight started. Was is this fight going to happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got pretty convinced it was going to happen. Yeah. But you're still thinking about it a little bit, and the narrative is so shifted to now. It's like, yo, why didn't he go there and beat the shit up? Yeah. Yeah. The energy inside the room, though, a little bit to me felt like uh, like high school. After school fight 100%. energy, 100%. Yeah, but that makes perfect. And that's what all that's these all these YouTube is. fights are going to be about. That it, because they're not watching for the skill. It feels like a little weirder though. I didn't yeah. enjoy the energy as much. Like yeah. you go to like a real boxing match, or like a UFC fight, and it's like a bunch of fight fans that are ready to see like two warriors really like trying and just to just high level I, skill. I yeah, can exactly. see how you get. Yeah put off by that after enough like you're in it long enough and you're like you know what i don't really like because like a lot of people trying to be seen like a lot of people like there's fights breaking out which is common in fight sports but like just just felt like people everyone had cameras oh, like that's everyone, the other thing. Oh, six interviews everybody's for Andrew. Yeah. trying to get a clip everybody's mm. trying to get a clip of something and videotaping you and eh, clip it clip it clip it yeah every person coming up to you and mike is trying to like get you in some sort of weird situation where they have this viral video that's from it. It's, yeah, that I agree. Yeah. And that was an uncomfortable energy to be around. Because mm -hmm. I never feel that in a fight. Like when I was at the UFC, it's not like every single person there was some form of influencer that was going to potentially use me in a compromising situation to get views. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And feeling that, every person that asks, I'm not someone who says no to pictures, I'm not someone who says no to video. I always say every single time. But every time I went into it, I was like, who is this person and how are they going to try to exploit me? Did mm -hmm. anybody get you? No, like I was, I, I was pretty, I was pretty sharp on it. He was it. locked in. Though. Yeah, I he was, was like, locked in. Like you, you see him on stage, it's the same vibe. Like while people were like coming up to him, he's like, all right, okay, this person, what? Are, like he's like <laughs> triangulating. Like, yeah, I don't, even, I don't even know if you drank at all. Like you were like, no, I was pretty, yeah, I was pretty sharp. <laughs> and I said the same thing in every single interview. Mm. Every single interview, I, I, I did. This is the this Charlemagne tactic that I learned from the red carpet. Yeah. I was just gonna say that, but I was. Like, <laughs> when I was on the red carpet with him at MTV days, he's such a genius. He would have his shtick ready for whatever they were gonna ask him about because they're gonna ask the same question every single time. Mm -hmm. So he had his bit ready to go. And it kind of kills their clip. Like if they're just using you for a clip, it's no, like, well, there's it six kill it. of me saying the same thing. The opposite, it, the it gives them a better clip. Here's your funny thing. Okay. Here's your funny thing that you could clip, but now it's on my terms, not your terms. Mm -hmm. And your terms are always gonna be the most lo-fi. Mm -hmm. So it's just, what is this funny little anecdote that you could give them. So I just had my thing ready to go and I was just like, whatever they're coming asking. Yeah, after seeing those fights, is there any interest left for influencer fights? Yes, 100%. KSI Jake, you could really? get me to watch. The, the, this is the thing that you people- want to see KSI. It's not about that. Can I, I, counterpoint, did you care at all to see Dylan and Jake, or Dylan and Logan before they started doing promo? These guys are also entertainers oh. by trade. They're great at promoting their fights. So every fight pretty much when it was announced, for the most part, I've been like, eh. And then by the end, I'm like, all right, I, I want to see how this goes. I just, so maybe Jake is probably the only one because we actually see him getting better. But the others aren't necessarily getting better. It's, an, it's like. Yeah, but look at your metric for interest. Your metric you for mean? interest is skill. You're like, they're getting better at the skill and I want to see skill. Yeah. It's a high school, uh, after school fight. Okay. Which I'm interested in every single time. Yeah. Right? If I see two people on the subway arguing with each other and oh, I yeah, think it's going to fight, I'm locked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once that is your expectation, okay. and the more you're invested in one of those sides, the more you're going to see it. So it's not about the skill. It's about these two people that you really care about, you either really love or really hate, and you want to see justice. Right? And uh, if it, I switched my outlook, then maybe I can. You liked fighting it. before this. A lot of these kids that are watching, I think, weren't fight fans. No. Mm, like, no. I think they grew up in YouTube spaces, they they're were watching young. streaming. They were young. I was, I was sort of, it's not surprising, but you go there and much there's younger like, crowd. Oh, 14 year olds, 15 year olds. Yeah. Like, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's like they grew up watching soccer. 
Yeah. <laughs> like being a fight fan doesn't happen unless you're like a legacy fight fan. Like my dad got me into fighting early. You don't get into fighting until a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Maybe as an adult, you start to box for exercise and you're like, oh, this is kind of fun. You start watching some boxing matches, et cetera. Or you have like a friend who's really into it. Because we had Mike Tyson. So it's like. We had the, I mean, this golden <laughs> yeah. age of fucking boxing yeah. that we came up in. And even then, um, it's not even the biggest sport. It, yeah. it, to me, it felt like if it was a Mike Tyson fight, everybody stopped what the fuck yeah, they were doing that night and had the TV on. Or, or if they had what you could call YouTube culture surrounding, which is like those 24 sevens. Mm -hmm. So HBO did those 24 seven series Love and all of a sudden, exactly, you're like, now I'm invested in this person. That's what these streamers are doing all the time. Mm -hmm. That's what these YouTubers are doing. All, they're getting you invested. So if you're gonna see the person that you love go into a situation where they could get knocked out, mm -hmm. I gotta watch. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it affects it at all. I mean, the, the shit was sold the fuck out. It was crazy. Mm. Like, oh, it, yeah, they, they made some money. Yeah, and they yeah. were there early. Mm. Like it wasn't, they just like, with regular boxing, people show up for the last fight. Mm -hmm. That shit was packed when we showed up. Mm -hmm. Word. Packed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So I think it's just about making sure there's a reason to see people fight. Like if Jake wanted to fight Logan right now, you don't think that that would do oh, crazy that, numbers? that one we need to see. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the one we need to see, but I don't think we're ever going to see that. I, I think, I think, we, I think we could see that. I don't think we see that. I think we will see. I think we, I think we can see, see that. that. Well, I don't think we see I that. I think we will see that. Do we want to see that? Logan. I don't. Logan, <laughs> Logan don't want that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Logan's just biggest saying, opera. No, Logan don't want no problems. I think at the end of the day, these guys are entertainers. He fixes the and, they, and they know what will make money and what will sell. They sell very well. Mm -hmm. And nothing will sell better. No fight, maybe in history, will sell better than that. I'm not saying it'll be a, the best fight or even necessarily a good fight. No fight will have as high stakes as that, ever. Yeah. I'm fighting my brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, who the fuck is not interested? Yeah. Logan ain't gonna do that, bro. <laughs> so after that fight, it's like, Ray Mysterio, I got you, bro. <laughs> That's what he won. He won a five foot Mexican. <laughs> Anybody else still a little high? No. Nah. Come on, I'll tell you. <coughs> you, think, you think Dylan goes UFC? Um, you see him, he, he pulled out of Bellator, I think. If yeah, he yeah, said he's going to release from Bellator. I mean, that's the most logical move for him. Mm -hmm. But, like, he needs to get training and he needs to, like, he needs to train the hands, too. Yeah. The jujitsu is nice. He's going to be in the UFC and he's going to be better than everybody in the UFC at jujitsu. You have that. But we've seen people who are nice at jujitsu. When they go up against guys that can mitigate the jujitsu and have hands, they have real fucking problems. So he needs to get in there, take it serious, and do it. Now, if you're the UFC, you go, this guy can sell the fuck out of a fight. I mean, he just sold a million pay-per-view. And people were not tuning in for KSI Tommy. No. They're tuning in for Logan and Dylan. So he can sell fights. So if it's not UFC, maybe it's another one of these fledgling uh, promotional companies that wants to get after it. Mm. And they could put give the bag to a guy who could sell the fuck out of a fight. Mm -hmm. So let's see if he wants to do it. Three things. Um, did they drop the lawsuit? I don't know. That's don't a good know. question. I got to ask. Why is Logan not fighting him in uh, MMA? Because he sh shook hands and said he would fight him if he shows up to the fight. Or yeah, I, I think, have to know if he gives his purse yeah, away. Yeah, if he gives his purse. Yeah. So it's like both of them need to need honor to, their... Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't think Logan should do that. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Yeah, I don't think he should do that. I mean, he shouldn't, but yeah. he said he was going to do it. And well, there's a perfect example. Like, people will pay for that fight. Yeah. People pay for it again. Because <laughs> now it's like you even it up. Yeah. You got power, you got height, you got reach, but he got the ground. You want to do a crazy fight right now? Oh, boy. Let me get into my promotional job. Hit it. You ready? Oh. Same night. Nate Diaz versus Jake Paul MMA. Logan versus oh, Dylan fuck. MMA. Oof. Yeah, that's far. Yeah. I'll I'm go. paying for that. I'll go. We're going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going. Yes. We're going. <laughs> yeah. Perfect example. You could keep dancing with this thing. And yeah. keep making crazy money. And as long as the guys are walking out and they're okay, like the bare knuckle thing is different. You see what someone looks like after a bare knuckle fight. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's rough. Yeah, you're different. Your I face wonder, is different. I wonder if you take less damage in an MMA fight if you get choked. Yeah, they yeah, say like, they, yeah, they say that with like uh, MMA, you take it's like less cerebral damage. Yeah, with boxing, it's just constant. It's like you're an offensive lineman or yeah, something like that. It's just constant pounding. micro concussions or whatever. Yeah, they call yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that would be now. Now we're into it. That is mm -hmm. cage right there. Ooh. 
That's that's one. Yeah, yeah, that'd be crazy. All right, guys, we just talked sports, so you know what that means? It's prize picks time. Your boy's cold streak ended last week. My prize picks are on point, so Wakash locks are back, baby. First of all, I'm telling you, Tua Tagovailoa gets more than 272.5 yards passing. They got embarrassed last week in Philly. It will not happen again. They will bounce back. And Adam Thielen will get less than 68.5 yards receiving. I just don't believe it. I'm sorry. I love you, Adam Thielen, but I don't believe in it. So... Those are your prize picks, your Akash Singh locks. All you got to do if you haven't already signed up is go to prizepicks.com and you will get a 100% deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Schultz. So that's a free $100 if you want it. Again, prizepicks.com, 100% deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Schultz. And let's get back to the show. Manchester was, was cool, man. We had a good vibes. It's cool to see like tribal white people. <laughs> like, yeah, because y'all aren't allowed to do that here. Well, well, the only really? not that cool. To see the that. only <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that cool. <laughs> it's a couple of January six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> the only tribal white January six looked pretty fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <It was> fun <laughs> yeah, we man. can be completely objective here. Uh, fun, not fun. <laughs> Didn't seem not fun. Yeah, all right, baby. <laughs> you wouldn't get the pay per view to watch the January six. You wouldn't just watch it. Oh yeah, yeah. from home. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 watch fucking Pelosi running around. <laughs> yeah, <that'd> be awesome. <laughs> yeah, there's a. Uh, uh, yeah, the, it was just when you're in England, you get to see like tribal whites, and in America, you only see like Italians that are like that. Really, like culturally tribal. The Irish a bit, but I think the Irish are like so mixed in general. Like, and then I've yeah, so it's like you go there, and within 30 minutes distance, they speak completely differently. Mm. Like Liverpool to Manchester, the accents are completely different. They're culturally different. The way they identify is completely different. The mm. way they relate to the crown is completely different. And um, yeah, you get how like the the soccer teams or the football teams are a manifestation of that tribalism. Uh, so everything you feel about your town, you get to express through this game. Mm. And when you're playing against this other town, that probably thousands of years ago, you guys used to fucking go to war with and shit. And it that's, is. That's why they'll fight. The, what are they? The hooligans? Yeah, soccer hooligans? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they are distinctly different. Yeah. Like an hour away. Like in New York, there's an accent from the Bronx to Brooklyn, like a little bit different. The way that the Scouts speak mm -hmm. in <laughs> Liverpool is for one hour difference, it is the same as from Texas to Mexico. <laughs> no. Bro, <laughs> it's nuts. it is crazy. But they look the same. They just sound Look different. the same, yeah. dress the same, act the same. And then they say the word chicken. <laughs> Yeah. Shechen. Shechen. Yeah. Koch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. Okay. So, so it's like. Which, that's Liverpool? That's yeah. Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it was like, I don't know, it's cool to go see that. And then obviously going up to Scotland was the shit. Oh, yeah. We linked up with your family. Yeah. My family all came out. That's like fire. Doing a show in fucking Scotland. Yeah. And yeah, it was just, that was an honor. That was really fucking yeah, cool. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you also, Royal Albert Mus uh, Music yeah, Hall? Royal Albert Hall, yeah. Royal yeah, Albert yeah. Hall. Yeah. It's like a historic venue. Burr filmed a special there. What yeah. was that like? Oh, that was crazy. I mean, like, that that yeah. venue was just... That's one of the bucket lists, like, of dream venues. Yeah, it's beautiful. It was beautiful. There's, like, this gigantic organ in the back, and, like, it's stunning. It's, like, massive, but also intimate. And, uh, yeah, it was just unbelievable to be there. And, you know, Emma's whole family was there. That's the first uh, time they've ever seen me. Holy shit. That's a pretty good way to meet. So there was the another time. expectation. And this this hour, anybody who's seen it, is, like, by far the most intimate mm -hmm. and personal hour that I've ever done. So, like, it raises the, you know, the stakes when they're there. But it also lets them meet you, get to know you, yeah. and see you being successful yeah. We're all in an hour without you having to do it right here. Yes. So it's kind of nice if it goes yeah. well. I mean, yeah. the risks are there, but if it goes well, yeah. great. We're good. Yeah, it was so weird. It's like I wasn't nervous. I was just hyper aware of anything sexual. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, like I, I was confident it would go well, but anytime that there were like sexual references or yeah. I was like, Oh wow, her family is yeah, here. yeah. Whereas if I'm doing it in Ireland, who gives a fuck? I never even yeah. thought about it. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't. I it, so. Do you ever do you ever change stuff if your girl's family is there? Has has, she, has her family seen you? Her mom has seen me perform. Her dad has not, and I definitely softened it a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I don't. You know, even stuff stuff about her my mother in law loves. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I definitely softened it. A bit. You did you soften anything? Come on, yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> 
I, I was there when you did oh, it, too. Oh, that, yeah. that was hilarious. It was, it was my yeah, family was there. Was there. My mom was there. Oh, shit. And then, yeah, and then it didn't work or something like that? No, it did no. better. It did way better. Yeah. <laughs> standing O, I think. I think it was a standing O. I'm it's pretty like, sure. Oh, you know, we got to talk. <laughs> Bro, dude, we got to talk. Okay, so we're in the Netherlands, right? And the, the Netherlands is like, uh, we're doing a show in Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. Beautiful city, unbelievable city. But the Netherlands, these are like the most literal people you'll ever meet in yeah. your life. Like, they're... <laughs> This is this is fun. This is fun. And th- like a very literal people, right? And they actually have like a history of American comedy being there. There's this show called Raymond is Lot, like Late Night with Raymond or whatever. He would bring American comics. So they're aware of like American comedy and they've been fans for like decades. So good place to go perform, but understand very literal. Mm-hmm. Like I was even joking around with the guys, but this is a hundred percent serious thing. Like I was in the hotel. This is how literal. I'm in the hotel and I walked by a guy and I was like, uh, I was uh, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Just like that's what we would say to somebody yeah. as you walk by them. And uh, he goes, um, I'm a little sad today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I but, like that. Uh, things, things will go better, you know? Like, literally yeah. told me yeah. how he's doing, yeah. right? Yeah. So I know this because I performed in Amsterdam. We did the yeah. special. Like, I'm aware of what I'm going to get. And Mark, before he goes <laughs> on, he goes, yo, I have an idea for a joke. Can I throw it by you? Yeah. And then, I'd never been to Amsterdam. And so I had this Anne Frank joke that I normally do. And then I had another thing because Anne Frank was from Amsterdam. Yeah. Her home is still there. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I was trying to do this idea that I thought would be funny. And like, after you do the set so many times, you're like, yeah, I just want to do something new, something local, something fun. So I was like, okay. Uh, it's interesting to me that like two most famous people from Amsterdam is uh, Vincent Van Gogh and Anne Frank. Yeah. You know what I mean? Vince Van Gogh uh, famously cut off his ear, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just funny to me that the two most famous people, you know, one of them can't hear anything and the other one can't speak. Van Gogh and Frank. I was okay. like, this would be kind of a funny idea we could play with, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I so I go, l- l- let me tell you something. Van Gogh can, this is what the, how the, Van Gogh can hear. He just doesn't have an ear. And Anne Frank can speak, she just shouldn't. Yeah. yeah. And that's how they're going to interpret this. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be able to like remove it a little yeah, bit, yeah. and you know what I mean, like and be like, oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah, they're going to go. They're literally going to be like, that is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> and Frank could speak all yeah. the time. She she spoke a lot. So yeah. like, maybe we could riff on it. So I was like, all right, that's good input from Andrew. You know, hater. And so I was like, let's go. Let's go ask some Dutch people and see what they think. So I asked like two Dutch guys, and they're like, yeah, yeah. they laughed. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Like you could probably do something with that. So I went up and did that shit. <laughs> they, they took it very literally, <laughs> bro. They just so literally. Yeah, they were like, huh? And what? then afterwards, the guy goes, "Hey, the joke worked," and we're like, "No, it didn't." Yeah. And then we're like, "What did you think it, he meant?" I go, "What do you think he meant when he goes, Anne Frank can't speak?" He goes, "Oh well, um, because she's dead." <laughs> I was like, dude. When you're dead, you can't speak. That's oh, literal. Wow. That is literal. <laughs> like, God damn it, dude. Oh, uh, it was fun. Yeah, I mean, Amsterdam was Amsterdam cool. Amsterdam was cool. And we, and we just went for a walk, dude. We just kind of just walked around. You know? Oh, yeah, hit that red light district. <laughs> oh, what did yeah. you do? Did you do anything? Nah, you just. Substances? No, nah, substances oh, while you're out there. No. I don't think so. Just drink, whatever like that. You can't really. No, no, no. Let's ask the. What did Dove and Volley do? Nothing. Oh, uh, yeah, nothing. Nothing. You can't really. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Like you can't smoke while you're walking <laughs> around. There's some oh no, no, no. Vala did. That was too fast. Yeah, I know. It was too quick. Like, oh, no, no, nothing, oh nothing I thought you meant like actual, like real drugs, not like weed. Yeah, I'm just saying sex. red. Li- yeah, no, come on. Oh, we know what we're talking no, about. No, Dub was negotiating. Oh, yeah, he tried, oh, yeah. he's trying to get a rate just to see what the deal was. He just yeah. wanted to know the deal points. We yeah. were window shopping as a group. <laughs> I mean, it is so much fun. Hilarious. I get why women do it. Like if they're if they look at clothing the way we look at pussy. It makes total sense to just go out to stores. Just to see and what they have. <laughs> because that's what we did, and I could have done that for six yeah. hours straight. Walk by the it Hordstrom's, is, you know oh, what I mean? Just see what they the have. You know what I mean? The <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was so much fun, dude. Every different design a woman you could imagine. And all, not all, but like bad. Yeah. That's not what, like that's what Blau was, was saying. telling us that. Bad. Yeah. 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 We're not talking about just like American street horse. Yeah. Yeah. Which they look like that's what they have to do. So right. They, they human track the, the crop of the creme, the creme of the crop. Oh, whatever yeah. that fucking, I got <laughs> it, I got it's it. Almost, it's almost, it's almost. It's regular, they're getting God money damn, from it. Dude. What was it? The what, crop the, of the creme was what crazy. Is it? Yeah. Cream of the crop. The, yeah. yeah, there we go. The cum of the crop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what technically is. So if, if you know, like, what does that even mean? I don't know. The cream of the crop? Yeah. You know how crops are creamy? <laughs> <laughs> what is you're right. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You're right, Al. No, you know? no, you were actually right about that. It's a stupid saying. I mean, you got it wrong, but you're right. It makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's so little. I'm literal. I should know that. Yeah. No cream on these crops. Interesting, interesting place because, like, um, 
they don't have like religion, right? Like religion plays like no part in their daily life or like the decisions that they make at all. So it doesn't play any part in how they create laws, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, in America or in other countries, like if you're religious, the laws kind of need to reflect the laws of God. Mm -hmm. So without that, you can create laws that just protect the people, mm -hmm. even if they're kind of immoral. Yeah. Okay. Um, which I love. Which is interesting because you can make laws that are the lesser of two evils. Yes. In America, you can't really do that because there'll be certain religious groups that go, well, this is wrong mm -hmm. and this is wrong. Even if this is less wrong, they're both wrong, so they have to be illegal. Don't compromise with you. Exactly. Can you give the, an example? Horse. Mm -hmm. So human sex trafficking is more evil than legalized prostitution. Yeah. They feel like people are gonna pay for pussy no matter what. Right. If we legalize it, maybe there'll be less human sex trafficking. These women can make money. They don't have to deal with these violent pimps. They will be protected. And also the people that have sex with them will be safer because now we're gonna make sure they get tested every week, et cetera. Mm. So they go, this is the lesser of two evils. Yeah. We'll make this legal, even though it's wrong, and then our society will be safer. And I love that because you don't fight against human nature. Human nature, guys are gonna go out and solicit sex workers, girls too, I guess. So what is the safest crazy, way <laughs> that you can that you can curate your culture? Yeah. Uh, drugs. They will test your drugs to make sure that you don't OD. Because humans will never stop doing drugs. We're gonna do drugs. So what is the lesser of two evils? That you at least are safer when you do the drugs so you don't OD and then put this crazy weight on our medical system that we're all paying for anyway. So when you're in that that like environment, and this is a weird thing because I've never felt this in America, you kind of start, and I'm not trying to do this thing like, hey, Europeans do it better, ah, fuck them. But they you, do. here's the thing, you start to feel like everything there is a little bit safer for you and that the government is looking out for you. Like for example, if I was gonna get like food somewhere, I would assume that the food is good for me. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that, the Candy is good for you. But I would assume there's not gonna be something crazy in the food that's gonna give me cancer. Yeah. Where in America, everything that I eat, I go, probably gonna give me cancer, yeah. but you know, it is what it is. But over there, I would assume the government would go, you know what, this is gonna be bad for the people if we legalize Which these. They, we were literally talking about this before the podcast. Food in Europe is much more regulated than America. They won't have like, my wife bought Sour Patch Kids out there. There's some colors that just don't exist in England, where she bought it, it was like licorice flavor. The flavor has to be somewhat natural. Mm -hmm. We can't just make Red 40 and pump it in everything or whatever. Mm. Skittles could cause cancer that are banned in California. They're not banned in the other 49 states. We don't give a fuck. Right. You go to Europe, they're gonna have a version of Skittles that won't cause cancer. Yeah. Yeah. So which they do, yeah, I again, I think that's, not everything they do is better, but that's a big thing they do better. Yeah, it was kind of, and it was cool like feeling to have while I was there. And I understand why they're a little bit more obedient when it comes to rules. Mm. Because, they assume that the rules benefit them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, Vala said when the, the announcements were happening before the show, they're like, guys, there'll be no filming, put your phones down, you'll be asked to kick out. He said he saw 100 people take their phones and put it in their pockets. He's like, I've never seen that happen before. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody hears it, yeah. and then the intro, they wanna get a video of it, and then they keep their phone out. Mm -hmm. And I think that, yeah, I, I would be, it's like being obedient almost with your parents. It's like, if you trust your parents have your best interests at heart, okay, you're gonna listen to them a little bit yeah. more. And I think they have that relation. Yeah. I was like, that's kinda cool. Yeah, we were hanging out with these Dutch guys and they they said that when they came to America, they like just spent some time like driving around like the Midwest and stuff. The thing that they just saw everywhere I thought was so funny is this phrase, it's the law. Like they would say it to them over and over like, it's the law, buckle up, it's the law. Don't text and drive, it's the law. And they're like, there's this like reinforcement of the law, but yet Americans love to break the rules. Whereas in like Amsterdam or Europe or in uh, the Netherlands, huh. like the, everything's kind of legal and when there are rules, everyone follows them. So because it's like you can do opposite. pretty much anything. Yeah. yeah. So when we say don't do it, don't fucking do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It must be bad. Yeah, they're looking out for me. Whereas I, here, we I love always, breaking rules. I always thought, and this is probably part of it, but I always thought America, it just glorified rebellion because that's how our country was founded. Yeah. So rebellion is like, and it should, in that case, it should be, but like, it's a beautiful thing to rebel against. So we're, it's all kind of just baked in. Also, power. everybody here rebelled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like every immigrant class that came True. is rebelling against something. They're True. like leaving their whole family. It's like in our DNA to rebel. Mm -hmm to fight back, to push back, to antagonize. It's yeah. just who we are. Yeah. Like the family members that didn't come here are the ones that, you know, got along with the system. Yeah. Like the system says I should do this, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. So yeah, just culturally seeing that was cool.
And then going, uh, uh, one place that was like really interesting was uh, Ireland, Dublin. Yeah. First show we did, amazing venue. I mean, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I've never been in a venue that big that had that incredible acoustics. Really? Mm -hmm. Like usually you get into these venues where you got fucking 7,000 people, you, there's a little echo. Yeah. This was almost none. Really? And I don't know how the fuck they did it, but it was amazing. But the entire time we're in Dublin, we're asking people, what should we see? What should we see? Not a single person gave a suggestion of anything to see. <laughs> the entire time, not a single person. They, they all just go. There's a spider. Yeah, you go see the spider. Yeah, there's like this chopstick that's in the middle of town <laughs> and people go. And then there's like a Trinity College or something. Some college yeah. that looks like any other fucking The oldest cutie. book. Go see the oldest book. It's over in the library. <laughs> Literally, not, they have no clue what to do. But they all say go out to the pubs. And we're like, oh, what are we going to do? We're going to have some fucking Guinness. Go out to the pubs. Go out to the pubs. Mm. Fire. We went to some pub. I forget the name of it. There's two guys playing guitar. And people are in the pub. And the Irish, they need the drink to open up, to bloom a little mm. bit. But once they have it in, like during the day, they're kind of reserved. They're a little bit kind of quiet. They're, they're removed. When the drink gets in them, it's the lower deck of the Titanic. <laughs> I mean, they, they are singing, dancing. I love you, affectionate. Like, it is a beautiful thing. And once you experience that, and that's just one pub. There's 100 pubs in the city. They're all yeah. doing that. We're singing every fucking song together, arm in arm, having this amazing time. And once you realize that, like, that's what exists there, you don't need other dumb shit. Mm -hmm. Recover during the day, do whatever you need, because once you guys hit the bar and that music starts... And they're like a musical fucking people. They're like going after it. And I would say I was like, maybe that was our most fun night. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's why they do the Irish goodbye because the love is wearing off. <laughs> yeah. Like, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here before I mean again. Yeah. yeah. Or they just forget you said bye to them. <laughs> they're like, that motherfucker leave and say bye. Leave without saying bye. No, he said bye. You're yeah. too drunk. Dude, to we got in a fight and then I kissed you and <laughs> yeah. I left. What do you mean? Yeah. 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 Bro, that, yeah, it was that. Or London, we went to the box and uh, <laughs> that was crazy. I almost wish Derek was here to tell this story, but like, you know, the box, have you heard of this nope. venue? So the, the box that we have one in New York, I think the original one is in London. It's basically this like, uh, <laughs> like cabaret, like avant-garde provocative type of performance, oh, okay. right? The idea yeah. is to be as provocative yeah. as possible yeah. with performance art. It starts at two in the morning. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it would be like a kind of one of these like very difficult to get into. Can't have your phone out like vibes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we go to an after party for the show and then we go to the box afterwards. And uh, we walk in and uh, there's a guy on stage dressed as a homeless dude and uh, he's uh, shitting into a silver pan. Oh, oh okay. he's naked, by the way. Oh, Dick yeah, out. naked, shitting into a silver pan. So there's shit coming out of his asshole. He's bending over, the shitting into the pan. Then he Big grabs, meat. say again? Big meat. Uh, meat was regs. Yeah, yeah. Long balls. Oh, fake tits. Oh, yeah, he oh, had yeah. fake tits, too. Yeah. And, but real uh, attached. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're like breast implants. Oh, shit. Dick and shitting into this pan. Then he grabs the shit and starts to rub it all over his dick and genitals. And I think he even throws some of it at the crowd. Oh, no, yeah, that's yeah. a fight right there. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Anyway, uh, so anyway, we're watching this, right? And we're watching Derek, and Derek is looking at this, and he's like, what the fuck is yeah. going on? Where did you guys Turned bring me? What the <laughs> no, no, you would think, but he's like shocked and going on, is everything okay? And none of us realize it, but earlier, a trans woman, a gigantic like fucking linebacker trans yeah. woman walks up to him and just grabs his dick. Mm. And Derek is like, yes. What the fuck did you just? No, he is not. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. He was like, he's like, yo, you acting like a man right now. Like yeah. only a man would do that. You know? I thought he'd be but, in heaven with that. Shit. No, no. Got dicks and tits. So, but, but keep in mind. So in his, so in his, I thought, I thought she knew him. <laughs> I thought she knew him. You know what I mean? I was like, yo, this is his moment. I thought she was giving him a moment, but none of us knew that that happened. We just saw him really disheveled in this environment. And I'm assuming it's because he's watching the guy shit in the pan for the yeah, first yeah. time and running it on his genitals with fake tits, which is a pretty reasonable reaction. So all of us are dying laughing. Derek thinks we're dying laughing that the di gigantic trans linebacker grabbed his dick and he didn't do nothing. Mm. So he was like, they all think I'm pussy. And he's like, oh, no. I don't, I, he, goes, he goes, I don't want to beat the shit out of this girl and ruin the after party for everybody. But right now I'm fucking freaking out right now. A, a, a trans grabbed my dick like it's okay. And to recover, 
There's another trans rubbing shit all over his dick on the stage, and everybody's <laughs> laughing at me. All my homies are laughing at me. I lean in to him, and I go, Spin cycle. <laughs> bro, I go, so I say this, I go, bro, it's okay, you gotta understand, like, they're trying to provoke, they're trying to act weird. And he thinks I'm talking about grabbing a dick, yeah. but I'm talking about the man shitting in the pant. Right? And I'm like, they're trying to act weird. He goes, he goes, yeah, I don't fuck with this. Cause he thinks I'm talking about the dick grab. And I'm like, you gotta understand, it's like doing edgy jokes at a comedy club. <laughs> you can't be the, I was like, you can't be the white girl offended. And he's like, this man bitch grabbed my dick. Yeah. But, but he's not saying he's it. He's not saying it. Yeah. So we just laughing and I'm like, bro, you don't you can't be a Karen. He goes, so I just gotta let a man bitch grab my fucking dick. <laughs> She was, bro, everybody. It's like a sitcom. Bro, it is. literally what Derek was fuming, but he didn't want to ruin the night for everybody because yeah. he knew if he did what he would normally do, the night is over. Yeah. Like we're kicked out, right? Immediately, see you later. And uh, it wasn't until we got outside after the fucking thing that he explained the whole situation. Yeah. We were laughing at him for an hour. <laughs> Every time we turned over, he's like. He can't believe he's just sitting there staring at the ground. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not that serious, though. Bro, getting your dick wrapped? Yeah. Mike, you've been to TSA before. Sometimes they, they <laughs> see where, where you at with it. Nah. Yeah, I guess. This person that was there was being way too way too much. Yeah. Yeah, like extra, like grab people's faces and shit. And you'd be like, all right, all right. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, good. Jamil old. ran away. He saw it coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jamil ran away. Yeah. Like, yeah, he was. Yeah. Heisman. Yeah. 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 He's, been, he's been to the box before. He was yeah. prepared. He, he was prepared. Yeah. He knew. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. It's time to level up, okay? Um, a a non-negotiable for me is ensuring the products that I consume are scientifically backed and objectively tested with the expert's credibility. Like This is why I love uh, Momentus, okay? Momentus right here, not a game. They are setting a high bar with a continuously expanding line of products designed by industry-leading experts and performance leaders and are especially crushing it when it comes to the male hormone support. I'm telling you, the Tongkat Hormone Support Bundle right here, fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. If you are trying to elevate stamina and drive, okay? If you're trying to balance that male hormonal help, if you wanna boost testosterone levels naturally, that natural boost you definitely can use. Honestly, you wanna enhance that libido. This overall vitality, it will help build muscle mass. This is absolutely fantastic right here, okay? Testosterone is the quintessential male hormone. It impacts muscle growth, fat distribution, just overall health in general. Tongkat Ali can support testosterone production, enhance energy, mood, and help body adapt to stress. Stress is out there. It is a fucking problem, definitely in my life, so I'm trying to manage that as much as I possibly can. Listen, experts like Andrew Huberman, our boy, uh, Kelly Starrett, and 150 plus pro college uh, teams, even the US military, rely on momentous products. So what you can do right now is go to livemomentous.com slash flagrant Use the code flagrant for 20% off the male hormone support bundle and more of our favorite products. That is L I V E M O M E N T O U S dot com slash flagrant for 20% off. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we're going to take a break real quick because you need to know about SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads and 70,000 events every single day, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app, and that is for a reason. Football's back. If you're looking for good deals on tickets to that, maybe an Akashin comedy show, Andrew Schultz comedy. To show SeatGeek has got you. And what's important is each ticket is rated on a scale of one to 10. So look for green numbers. See how that's all green? That means it's a good deal. Red means it's a bad deal. SeatGeek is actually looking out for you as a buyer, which is incredibly rare in this space. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. Isn't that fucking crazy? So if you can't make it, you can just do a swap. There you go. And you know Flagrant comes through for you guys, so if you use our code Flagrant, you get $20 off of tickets at SeatGeek.com. That's $20 off your first purchase with a promo code Flagrant. Now let's get back to the show. There's a, there, The fight culture in Europe is nice also. Like, oh, yeah. That's something I didn't really ever see. But like in America, I feel like fighting has such a high, has so much like high stakes. Like someone might have a weapon. Like there feels like there's a desire to like really hurt someone. Feels like there's death connected yeah, yeah, yeah. to it every time. Whereas in Europe, way it's way more likely you could find a fight. Mm -hmm. But when they fight, they're like, hey, let's just punch each other and then let's go eat after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like it's, that's it used to be like that. Really? Yeah. And then it's just, we got too many guns, so it's just like nobody wants to be embarrassed. We got guns and uh, camera phones. Yeah. yeah, the social media. Yeah. Like we go eat. The embarrassment after. lives forever now. Yeah. Bro, we go eat after. There are these two guys that came to the show earlier. That's like in this place. It's like this deli at like four in the morning. We're all eating. We're all like tired, kind of drunk, just like eating food. And then this dude walks in. I think he's Scottish or something. No, no, he's uh, no, 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 he's from, he's from England. He is. Oh yeah, yeah. And so then he walks in and he's just like talking shit. He all. Well, he walks in, we're all like joking with him, like making fun of him because like it's raining, everyone's soaked. And then he starts talking to one of the guys at the booth. And the guy at the booth, they start like jawing at each other. And then the guy at the booth stands up and he's like, yeah, punch me. And he's like, yeah, I will punch you, motherfucker. And like they just start yelling at each other. And then Schultz is like, oh, just sit down. And then both of them are like, that's a better idea. <laughs> and, then, and then they both sit down and then they all just eat together. Oh, we yeah. also love bomb the guy. The guy needed a little bit of love. Oh, yeah. He had like a chip on his shoulder, and then we just started love bombing him. Yeah. We were like, Patrick, Patrick, yeah, yeah. Patrick, crazy. Patrick, we love Patrick. And he was like, oh, all right, let's get to <laughs> like, like, Derek like, grabs his dick. <laughs> <and Jack. laughs> but like from one minute to be like, yo, we're going to fight in this deli. Yeah. Like if someone threw a punch, it was on, to then just like eating beans together. Two seconds. Yeah, uh, like that is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. You, I think we get this like different version of like British people where like we get the Hugh Grant version. Mm -hmm. So we expect they're all like these like mumbling pussies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. nobody is afraid of Hugh Grant, right? Yeah. Hugh Grant is a, is a, is a bitch for yeah. all intents and purposes, right? Like that's what his character has oh, always yeah. been, yeah. and like I'm talking shit after he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> who, 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 who? No, no, who? Hugh you Grant. Shit about no, 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 Hugh Grant knows. Like that's the way he's been playing it. Your so, perception of the British is they are like him, but they're not. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw a Guy Ritchie movie, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. I was like, this is England? That's more fuck? of England yeah. than Hugh Grant. Okay, okay. Hugh Grant is kind of like, like the royal uh, idea. Mm -hmm. Like, let's be uh, elegant and, and simple and have our feelings and, you know, be uh, un, uh, unaware and unsure of ourselves. Yeah. And the majority of England is like... So you want to fight about this or what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't like your soccer team. You know, like, my side, you want to just fight? Maybe we'll stab each other a little bit. And then if we live, then uh, we'll do it again next week. When you leave London, you're like, oh, I see how you guys voted for Brexit. Okay. <laughs> I understand what's going on here. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised they don't vote to further Brexit. Yeah, like Liverpool. each one of the little areas yeah. wants to wants to Brexit. <laughs> like, yeah. It, yeah, it's 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 amazing. It's kept together. Actually, shout out the Crown. <laughs> Shout out the royal family. Holding all these guys together is quite impressive. Yeah. Like, that's a good feat. Because they're not all on board. No. They can't hold their family together. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of dissent, put it that way. Yeah. It was fun, though. It was fun. You farted in the, uh, in the lounge and it created a scene. Do you remember that? Yeah, the Indians got all excited, dude. <laughs> dude. Right as we were leaving, you know how he just farts yeah. often? <laughs> The, most of the time he farts and no one says anything. But then we were raised, we were leaving, bro. We were in Abu Dhabi, we were sitting yeah. in this tiny lounge, and he just goes, uh oh. And we all just look at him, and it's just, just the loudest fart. Yeah. All of us walk away, and then literally some dude from across the thing goes, hey, that's pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> you got a picking and flicking situation. I did, dude. I did, I did, but I didn't care. I leaned the fuck But into then it became that. like a combo. You guys were like talking about it. You're like, yeah, dude, my stomach hurts. <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. It created bro. a moment. I've never seen is. that before. My stomach wasn't ready, bro. <laughs> it wasn't fucking ready. What did that guy say? Do you remember? I don't know. I thought he liked it, though. The Indian dude, the old Indian. <laughs> bro, nobody milks wheelchairs on a plane like fucking Indians, bro. And it's goddamn annoying. <laughs> it takes twice as long to get on a fucking airplane if there's Indians there because every Indian over 45 <laughs> pretends they're 300 years old and they get in a stupid fucking wheelchair and then like when they have to get out they exaggerate how slow they have to oh <laughs> like I've never walked before they're oh. 80 dude they just look young because they don't age like white people no no they look like shit <laughs> they look bad like they're it, old no they look bad but like they're 100 years old all of them I bet so they are old yeah yeah, that's that was what I was yeah, saying. Yeah, you said every Indian that's forty five gets in a wheelchair. I'm telling you, they're old. Oh, 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 oh God, they are a hundred. Yeah, gotcha, 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 gotcha. No, but they're doing the old Disney World trick. Yeah, that's what yeah. they're they're milking it, dude. <laughs> they're fucking milking but you it. You don't see that the, no. even oh, here in God. the states. The best was that they were doing it, and Andrew was just seeing like six of them go, go and unload. Just but cutting, then, it's like, but what the best part is. They unloaded, and so the people that are walking the wheelchairs are now coming off the sky bridge, except then one person behind Andrew, like an old Indian lady, gets into the wheelchair and turns around <laughs> to 
Cut the intro. Again. What a hero, dude. Awesome. <laughs> bro. Shouts to Auntie. Unbelievable, bro. Unbelievable. Yeah. But they're doing it here in the States, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you'll have a fucking There was just role. more of them over there. Oh, there were yeah. a lot. They were coming back, yeah. It that was, shit is, it's getting excessive. <laughs> right? With Come the, on, bro. If, yeah, you can, if you need the wheelchair, I don't know. I don't know if you could you travel. You need a wheelchair when you sprained your ankle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to get fake He had a legit bro. injury. <laughs> He wasn't being a lion yeah. fucking Indian. <laughs> or like load him in from cargo, you know? Just <laughs> God. We Damn. Up, Dove. Damn. Honestly, man. no. These Look times. At, in these times. No, that is that is honestly it might be a good idea. It might be a good idea. No, Fuck no. We, could, we on top of the plane, <laughs> but not on the yeah, yeah. That's a, <laughs> subjugation, dude. No, that's no, no, fucked it up. was and then the fucking we might have to cut this, but the smell. All right, all right. Honestly, <laughs> like something you've never experienced. I have. You have? <laughs> fuck me, bro. Like, it was one of those things where I was like, this this is, it's not a stereotype. <laughs> I went to, they've designed something where we were in the plane to, like, create a cocoon with air because it didn't get into oh, my seat. Yeah, no, the mask dropped down. Do you remember? Did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It was such a good. Bro, the Just curry smell. flavor air coming out of it. What airline oh was this? Oh, my God. Etihad, but the jet bridge smell. The jet bridge. Not when you're the... just locked in this little thing. Yeah. And they are. And I don't even know why they're sweating. They're sitting down. They're getting rolled. But they are fucking emanating stink. <laughs> it's a distinct B.O. Because I feel like there's an African B.O. and there's an Indian B.O. And you know which one is which. Oh, yeah. wow. How wild is that? Relax. Oh my! That's not African American. That is true. You never got into an African's cabin and been like, "Whoa!" Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I went to an Indian comedian friend of mine, India Indian, his like comedy show. Entire rows, I would just be like, "God damn, boy!" Bro. But what is the deal? They don't wear deodorant. Why not? Why not? I don't. It's, they're it's, they're it's the first we, hipsters, bro. No, but like, I think it's because we go to Brooklyn. They all because, smell like that. No, no, but we've we've been limited in our ability because bullying people is how you kind of get them to assimilate, right? Like you bully them a little bit, and then they kind of get on board because they understand like what they're doing is different from whatever the dominant culture is. We've and been I think, trying to bully a haircut for the longest. <laughs> it ain't working, bro. Dominant culture. <laughs> this is the dominant it culture. Ain't okay. They try. This to, is the. They dominant. try to make them wear deodorant. They invented the brand. What is it? Old Spice. They were like, dude, these people love spices. <laughs> Let's make a company. Still didn't work. And yeah. still <laughs> the, like, the oldest spice is the work, first one. Bro. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable, dude. I, I just could not. We need to do something about it. I think it'll change over time. I think actual issue is infrastructure. There's not like supermarkets with deodorant on every whatever. So as infrastructure improves, more and more people are just going to start using deodorant. Can we sponsor deodorant. someone? But we were in the United Arab Emirates. We were yeah, so like... just culturally it becomes not. You just don't wear it. Okay. And gosh. then I remember Richard Pryor had a joke where they think, you know, he went to Africa and he's like, they think we smell weird with all the deodorant and shit. So he's like, but that's a joke. Yeah. But he said, <laughs> but he said, that's not true. That is a lie. That is a, that is a lie. To you think he emotionally truth that whole thing? That's an emotional truth. I think it's an emotional truth. No, it's an emotional truth. Dude. Dude. Because, I think there's a seed of truth. I think it's the Alner Palmer. <laughs> 70% is <laughs> the smell. This happened to me. I smelled this yeah. thing. No, because I don't think Africans smell or Indians smell like a, like a rose and, they, and they're like, ugh. Like, I think they go, oh, that's a beautiful smell. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, you're saying the deodorant. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, all these things are based on fragrances, right? Like mm -hmm. the nose knows what smells well. You think they uh, smell like a, like a flower and they go, oh, disgusting. I don't think they do. Maybe I think they go, this smells great. Yes. Maybe no. it smells fake I think to them. To them, it's like when. People who put on too much cologne or perfume. Yeah. So then they're like, yo, you're smelling too strong. Oh, good. It's a good smell. It's just like overpowering. That's they're, probably why they. Anything at this point. <laughs> anything. It was a real problem. It was a so real I problem. Had a, I was, I was, it was, was a real problem. My brother in law. I was stuck behind one of these guys, man. <laughs> And it was like a wall. Like it was a, I was walking through a wall. Like, and keep in mind on the side, they got the wheelchairs going. So I'm just further stuck behind him and just boom, smacking. I feel like Bill and Dennis, bro. Just get smacked around by Indian Ten. fucking body odor. We well, have it might have been Pakistani. Could have been. It could have been actually, yeah. yeah. We have a brother in law who stayed with us and we kept telling him, we we're like, dude, you smell. And, and he, was, he, he was like, no, I don't. I don't. What? I'm telling you, I don't. Then he went to, he told us he went to his cousin's house in LA and he was on a business call and the cousin's dad, his uncle, smelled him 
went and got a brand new stick of deodorant, <laughs> handed to him while he's on the call. He's like in in Punjabi. He's like, no, now put it on now, no, well, and then no. lectured him about how you're giving us a bad name. Yep. There's a stereotype about Indians that we come here and we smell, and people like you make it harder for me to do business. That's it was so funny. <laughs> but, this uncle know, like, being like, now when yeah, you're on a call, you should have did that shit. <laughs> but you know how like too nice. You know how like I black was too people nice about it. Will over tip sometimes because they're trying to make up for the fact that you have that stereotype. Mm. They don't do that yet. Mm. <laughs> but you were being rude. You were being too foolish. Oh, I bullied him to tip him more. Yeah. Let's go. No, not tipping. No, no I know, but, he, <laughs> but he just, no, I know what we're talking about, okay. but it just came up. <laughs> right. but, but when we were getting on the plane and you Febreze that lady, that was too far. I didn't Febreze her. You did. You had a little Febreze. Also, you oh. fart all the time. You smell like shit all the time. <laughs> I did. I do fart a lot. That is true. So you smell a lot, not as consistently, not as constantly. But he's battling fire with fire. Like he only I'm, does it when he's around. The only thing I can <laughs> do. Battling spice with fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Spice that. with gas. Yeah. No, for real. That was the only weapon I had in that moment. <laughs> but when she turned away and you sprayed her, that was too far. I didn't spray her. Well, you, it wasn't a spray. I had gotten some of the what's it called? Um, what are they called? Uh, aerosol. Not oh. aerosol. It's a uh, fire extinguisher. Yes. <laughs> I got in a fire extinguisher. <laughs> I taken one fire extinguisher and I hosed her down. <laughs> I, I had to. I had to hose her and him down. It was I mean, it was I'll never forget that moment when I was stuck in a jet bridge and my nose was on fire for fifteen minutes minimum. You're to gonna go to, you know what's crazy? You're gonna go to India yeah. and the that's other on smells, me. That's on me. The other smells are going to be so overpowering, but you're not okay. even going to notice Can I tell you something? I'm opting into that. If when I go to India and everybody there smells of body odor, I deserve that because the, I'm I'm going to their culture and I'm adopting their culture, yeah. right? I, I If I complain about it one bit, I'm a bitch, right? Because I'm opting in. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't go to the beach resort and complain there's sand. Right. You asked to be here. Yeah. We're in the United Arab Emirates. Okay. We're flying... Etihad. It smells like a fucking pet store. <laughs> God damn, son. I mean, God it, God it, damn. What? If, if you said God it damn. smelled like a hamster cage, dude. It was it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. You in had my a shower time. on the flight. You offered to give someone a shower. I, I tried to because there there was a shower and that was rude. Yeah, yeah. No, I, one. Of, I saw the guy reject the shower and I said, um. <laughs> I can't argue with the smell. I won't argue with the smell. It's a smell that's there. I'd be telling people, you got to come here. It don't. There's not as much pollution in America to, exactly, to you're overpower the BO. But maybe that's alpha. It's I don't know. Really it's kind of alpha. No, I really me. think it also, the India, there's just a lot of pollution. It hits you in the face when you come in from America. And I think you the don't smell, smell these things. smell is, yeah. Dude, my dad, cigarettes in America, when he would smoke, I would cough. I couldn't handle it. In India, he'd be smoking this close to me. And I wouldn't even notice because it's so many other that's smells. a fucking fantastic point. Like if you live next to like a... Um, like a bakery. Yeah. You smell the fresh croissants every morning. Yeah. Right? Um, Punchline? No, there's no... I'm just saying you smell it so it's covered. <laughs> yeah. It's no, covered it's just... It, the pollution really is like, especially in like New Delhi, it's just crazy. You notice it, the yeah. smog. So that's what you're smelling. You're not noticing the person to person. So they come here, they just think that there's pollution. They're like, They oh. just think, yeah, this is... Yeah. This has never been an issue before, so why would it be an issue now? Yeah. This is this is clean here. But so then they start need to smell to. it. They don't smell themselves. That's crazy. I think you get threatened by alpha pheromones. Mm, that's think, probably I, I, like you ever go to like a like that's a. Probably that's probably valid. That's valid. Nah, that's keep going. On. No, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you go to like alpha like a situation right now. Yeah, that's that's probably, right. Yeah. To, no, you're probably right. Like if you're around like gorillas, you're probably right. Like gorillas have like a like a pheromone that smells like bo, and you're like, oh, these are like fucking boss ass gorillas. Yeah, and I that's was, that's alpha pheromones. I was bodied by them. I was bodied. Yeah, by them. I think you smell alpha pheromones, and I don't know if you can handle. No, I think what happened is one of those old women in the wheelchair crossed her legs, and I fainted. Sorry. That's what I think. That's what I think happened. That's what I think happened. Oh, I saw her go like this. I saw her go like this, like this, like this, and my knees got weak. Like I just hit the medwah for twenty minutes. Dude, we got my. We not, we I think need, we might need to run yeah, back the medwah really quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was. Yo, that's hilarious. It was. Yeah. It was truly one of the most excruciatingly painful moments of my entire life. So we're gonna take a break real quick because your balls are out of control. You gotta do some manscaping. You get what I'm saying? That's why you need Manscaped. It's a tool designed for just that. Winter is coming. 
You're Harry. You gotta take care of things. Manscaped is revolutionizing the game again by introducing the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra has two next gen interchangeable skin shaped blade heads, so you can do different lengths if you want to. Maybe do a little tight afro. Who knows? Uh, also, it has dual LED spotlights to provide contrast on multiple skin tones. Shave your balls in the dark too, that's kind of fun. And it's waterproof, that means you can use it in the shower, so God bless guys, you know what you need to do. I use it, everybody in Flagrant uses it. And if you wanna get Manscaped, because we are Flagrant, you can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code flagrant at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code flagrant at manscaped.com. Your balls have been through enough, it's time to go ultra with Manscaped. Let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we are going to take a break real quick because you are losing your hair, but you don't have to. Thanks to our sponsor, Keeps. All right, Keeps is an online subscription service that makes it easy for men to treat their male pattern baldness. You know, two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness. You're probably one of those men, so you need to do something. Schultz has been on Keeps, loves it, got a luscious head of hair. With Keeps, you do a simple online consultation from the comfort of your home and get matched to a clinically proven, affordable, and personalized treatment plan that helps you boost and regrow your hair. And best of all, it is delivered discreetly right to your door. You don't gotta go to a pharmacy, be embarrassed. You don't gotta go to a doctor. Take care of it all at home. Find a plan that works for you and your schedule. Keeps offers flexible delivery options so you can adjust, pause, or cancel your plan at any time. It has helped nearly one million men keep their hair and you can be one of them too. Hair loss stops with Keeps. For a special offer to get started, go to keeps.com slash flagrant. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash flagrant. Now let's get back to the show. Um, there was an awesome Instagram moment while we were gone that yeah. was giving us extreme FOMO. We watched Akash <laughs> at his first concert. Uh, and he's Not my on, first concert. He's on stage at his first concert with mm. Fateh. And, Fateh, uh, shout out to Fateh. Fantastic concert. Shout awesome. out to Fateh, who's on tour right now. Go check out Fateh. And... Um, Akash was vibing. He was he was getting into it. Yep. What were you doing exactly? Because what was posted and that you reposted yes. happily yeah. was you texting next to him on yeah, stage yeah. while he was performing so, his heart. So out. we're perform so before I your I don't boy, know. Your boy. Yeah, it's my love. boy. It's my brother. I love this guy. He's yeah. fantastic. Check him out. Before I go, have you ever checked him out, or do you just look at your fucking phone? No, he was checking time? him out actually. Oh, <laughs> you're yeah, watching yeah, him. Okay, yeah, you're yeah, watching YouTube. Watching. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So before that, I was rapping one of his songs that he hasn't released. I knew more words than him. But this was the funniest moment from the thing. Right, 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 right. right. Is before I don't know I'm gonna get called on stage. So I'm texting my wife. I'm like, yo, I'm starving. I'm on this diet. I can't eat jack shit. I can't eat certain things at Chipotle. They're gonna close. Can you just order something for me? Okay. And then she sees the message, and then she's like, text me your order. They don't have X, Y, and Z. So while I'm on stage, she's like, they close in two minutes. You need to text me. I have to start texting her my Chipotle order as I'm on stage vibing with everybody because I have two minutes. So they're all getting fucking hype, raising their, and I'm, uh, I can't have sour cream. I can't have cheese. I can only have this <laughs> double chicken. <laughs> it's just, it was so fucking funny that someone caught that moment on camera. I was like, this is the best. Your wife caught it. it. Yeah, no, somebody filmed me Checking the thing and then oh, I thought she he posted sent it, it to both of us and then uh, she posted it and I, I reposted it. I got you, I got you. Yeah, but it was fa the concert was fired. It was so fun. It, it is working, cool. by the way. You're looking very trim. Yeah, you're oh, looking good, you. my boy. Appreciate How it. much That's you lose so far? I think I'm down like 21 pounds or something. Good. There's something yeah, hilarious about you. You're down 21 pounds? <laughs> yeah. Losing Holy weight God. and then just also losing the will to live. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's something so poetic about yeah, seeing you. It's a strict you. ass diet program. The best you've ever looked, just it's, so miserable. It's called state of the art soda, I guess, but it's like super strict. Yeah. So you can't eat anything really. Like even certain vegetables you're not supposed to eat. So I'm fucking <laughs> miserable all the time, but I do feel like I look great. There you go. You look great. Well, thank you. Yeah, you look great. Appreciate that. Shouts. I went to uh, Kid Super's birthday party. Oh, how was that? Oh, that shit. shit was fire. It was cool? Yeah, it was. He has a very young crowd, yeah. and they like to fucking party. Yeah. So, like, when I'm walking and I'm, I'm walking in my shorty, and all of a sudden a fucking mosh pit starts up. <laughs> Yo, I've never seen her look more terrified ever. <laughs> She's getting bumped around. I'm like this, like a fucking security guard, just trying <laughs> to get her out. <laughs> and we're like, dude. But thanks, he showed love. We went backstage. Fucking Bobby Schmurda, he performed. He was high as fuck. Oh, but that was a great performance. Fucking Rich Homie Kwan, he came. And then, <laughs> I'll tell this part. So Kid Super gets on stage before Rich Homie starts to perform. He's like, yo, guys, Rich Homie Kwan, 
he's a fucking legend. Like this guy's a genius, a musical genius. I'm like, I think he's only had like two hits. But one of them still slaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just like the way he spoke about him. You thought he was like bringing Jay Z on stage or whatever. I'm like, that is love right there. Like that's that's what's up. Rich Homie Kwan got got bangers though. No, he does. He has bangers, but I mean, the way he was speaking about him, well, you thought like Jay Z was coming to perform. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, shit. but both of those shits was fire. Like yeah. he knows how to throw a party. Yeah. Who? Who? Uh, uh, who Kid Cooper. Yeah, 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 he knows yeah. how to throw a fucking party. Yeah, it looked fun. Yeah, it was fire. Um, over the break. Well, not even the break. While you guys were away, it's funny. I think I figured out where strippers do during the day. Okay. Because it's like you know they work at night, but. They work for a few hours and then it's like, oh. yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah. So <laughs> I went to get my teeth white. You know, this place, a We Smile in Astoria, right up the block from Riviera's, a popular strip club there. It's called We Smile? Yeah, it's called We Smile. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so um, all the dental hygienists are strippers. Fucking oh, great. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, whew, Yeah. Couldn't even There's concentrate. A- like, they didn't even have to ask me to smile. I was just like, that's yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we smiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called We Smile for a but reason. But yo, the baddest. Dental what hygiene. do they wear? Just regular dental hygienists? You clothes? know they got the tightest like fucking oh, yeah, scrubs yeah. and shit like that. Woo. There's a uh, sorry, babe. But there's it was a, like, <laughs> <laughs> this is an old uh, trick from dentists. So your dentist will never tell you the price of the procedure. <laughs> oh, they got me. Who Good. told you? Because yeah, <laughs> I just went in for a whiting and it's like, oh, I'll do cleaning. I'll do the X-ray. I'll do everything. Like, yep. cut it up. But why'd you pay in singles though? <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like, I've never done that at Dentist my whole life. That's right. I was like, you want, to, you want an extra tip on that cold yes. pay right there? <laughs> but yeah. your teeth look white, bro. Oh, yeah, How many yeah. times have you gone? <laughs> oh, I'll run back. <laughs> I'll run back. <laughs> but isn't that crazy? Like, yeah. you just have the, my boy's dentist is like, yeah, you got to have like the fine girl go tell the dude how much I, it costs. Oh, that's a thing? Yeah, because you won't say no to the girl. Oh. If a guy comes in and he's like, yeah, it's going to cost five grand for your molars. Fuck, it, fuck your you dude's like, I don't dick. need molars. Yeah. But if a girl comes in this huge fucking ass and these tight ass uh, scrubs and they're like, hey, listen, it's $5,000 for that. And you probably need a whitening or whatever. You really going to tell her no? They got me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, always well, Latinas. That's why I hate strip clubs. Right? Yeah. <laughs> God damn. I always walk out a lot poorer than what I was. <laughs> Make eye contact the whole time. Yeah. She's like, spit here, Poppy. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's feeling it. Right? <laughs> Why'd she ask me to say yeah. <laughs> What else we got going on, Martin? Uh, we we just got some a, feelings on facts? Yeah, we just got a bunch of random things, all right? All right feelings on facts. John Stewart's we'll show got canceled. The problem with John Stewart. Uh, Apple canceled it, apparently because of some of uh, the content related to the AI in China. Mm. So do, what I heard is... For John Stewart, John Stewart right is a fucking goat, by yeah. the way. He's yeah. the absolute goat. Yeah. Uh, what I heard is he was okay with them asking him not to criticize China because he's like, all right, I get it, fine. A lot of your products are made over there. It's a spiteful government, whatever. I get it. I'll pull back on that. Then when they asked about the AI criticism, he was like, you know what? Fuck you. I don't need this. You're not gonna sit here and police my my material. That's just not happening. Yeah. Wow. Fish is so fire, dude. Yeah, I love that. This and I get I get him. I get him not doing the China piece because he's agreeing to do a show on Apple. Yeah. So it's like if you're you know that you're in bed with yeah. Apple, who's in bed with China. So it's are you really gonna be critical of them? You're supporting the brand. You're building the brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So I get him going, all right, then I, I could potentially be hypocritical. Which doing is also that. so cool of him to have that self-awareness and be like, I'm going to give you that one. Apple. I'm going right, to give you fine. that one. Done. Who am I? Yeah. But then, you know, John Stewart's in the I don't need your money land. He, he's got fuck you money. Exactly. So there, but there's a lot of people in that land that still take the money. And I don't judge them because I could end up being one of them if I had that kind of yes, money. Yes. But John Stewart to truly be like, now nah, this is my ethic and I'm not going to fuck with that. I'm out. Now, Did question. Details of the AI story. No, I don't know. Uh, was it something he did do or something that he wanted to I think do? They I think wanted, wanted to do it. Yeah. yeah. Now, here's the question. I, I'm sure, like, John Stewart is, like, the most caring dude. Like, he's dedicated his post-Daily uh, Show career to, like, getting health care to the firefighters yeah. that were, you know, affected by 9-11. Like, this guy clearly cares about the people. The burn pits thing he talked about on his show. Yeah. He's the man. Now, I wonder how difficult it was for him to stop the show knowing that there are probably all these people working for the show yeah. that depend on it. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder if if he's like, ugh, I can't be censored and just become like a propaganda arm for Apple. But at the same time, 
There are people, all these people I fucking really love and believe in that rely on this. That's a good point, but I think it's going to be a crazy bidding war for that show. Oh, so you're saying yeah. the show won't stop. It will just go, go somewhere someplace. else. It's like, hey, we'll let you say whatever you want. Netflix, now's your time, bro. Yep. Yeah. Netflix, time, whoever now is, is your up. time. I mean, look at like uh, show is great. John, yeah, uh, he, I mean, he's John Oliver. Yeah, kills. Like, he's with HBO. Yeah. And they gave him so much more money. It's on YouTube. But you can watch all of it for free. Yep. Like, yeah. I mean, if I'm Netflix, I go, okay, let's compete with HBO. Let's go. Yeah. Put it up on put it on YouTube. Get the money. Yeah. Also, another cool story about John. One of our friends wrote for him on another project that Mm -hmm. he John decided not to move forward with. It was supposed to be like an animation thing and the technology wasn't there. He thought about his employees and then he just paid them out for an extra like I don't it was like way more than what the standard is. Like, here you guys, this will give you time to figure out what you want to do. He just paid them. So like he's the fucking goat. What I was wondering, you know who still needs a host for their show? The Daily Show. Does he come back? Oh, I imagine. I mean, imagine. It, yeah, even if he guest hosted for a month, it'd be the craziest. The, the Daily Show needs him really, really bad. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would be so fucking cool. And then immediately reestablishes it as yes. the brand that it used to be. Yes, that would be so fucking cool. Daily Show, get on it. Or if he runs for president. Oh Jesus, yeah. that's my vote. Dude, oh, a thousand Jesus. percent. Yeah. I don't think he wants to do politics because he can't. I, I, he probably feels like he can't be the honest, good person that he is. I feel like, you know, that's part that speaks to his character. But he he goes to Washington and he speaks like he he's trying to he's, make change. He is so it's political. Like, that's what yeah. I'm saying. This is, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Okay, what else we got? Michael Irvin called out his rapper son. <laughs> I love him. Such this? a funny clip, Michael dude. Irvin's the man. He's, he's the, we need him back, dude. Yeah, Michael Irvin. Are we allowed to play, you think? You think we'll get a clip for it? Is it ESPN? Then yes. Yeah. Basically, just describe it. He goes, uh, he goes, my son is rapping all this nonsense. You grew up in a gated community. He says his name. He goes, my son is a rapper, Tut Tarantino. Yeah. So you out the guy immediately. You can't even hide behind it. He's like, he's rapping about all these things, lies. He just said, he grew up in a gated community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You rapping about my, my life. life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so fucking yeah, harsh and fire. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Hey, Michael Irvin's a legend. Oh, my, but Shitty father, though. That's what I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> my thing is like, come on, Mike. Let him eat. Nobody yeah. can eat but you. Yeah. Also, like, talk to him. Uh, you got his number? Give him a Yo. call. Like, yeah. you don't got to do it on national television, bro. <laughs> but then I saw a clip of a couple of his son's music videos all in the big mansion. No. <laughs> so I said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to eat breakfast. I got to yeah. maneuver the fucking yeah. cameras. Yeah. You crazy? <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that was fucked up, bro. That's funny. What's yeah. this? What the, what's this Britney story? Yeah, all this Britney Spears drama is all of a sudden dropping right she, now. She got a book coming out. Ah, so these are excerpts from excerpts from the book. And apparently they're not making Justin look great. Yeah. So she's basically apparently she said, I don't know if this I saw this on Twitter. I know she said he had a small penis, but I think the first the excerpt of the tweet I saw was the, the first time they had sex, she said, uh, you can put it in now. And he was like, it already is in. And is that real? Is that, I like, don't know if that's real. Is that it's possible? Really <laughs> it's really funny. It's really funny. This bitch is crazy. Nah, bro. free Britney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. Lock that bitch up, bro. Yeah. This is, it's crazy that people are still making money off of her. That's what's crazy. Like, yeah. she, this girl is absolutely out of her mind, and they're signing book deals. Like, they're like agents and people maneuvering behind the scenes. The pimp never ends, bro. Yo, it's fucking yeah. insane. They're still neat. Yeah. They're gonna and eat. Now she's off the conservatorship, right? So yeah. he has her money. So they, could, so they could take even more, more money. But she her. gets yeah. but she gets the money at least. Yeah, does she? Or does the agent and the lawyer and all these other people siphon it all out, make sure her bill, at bills least are paid? Going to her. This feels like some Elvis shit. Y'all seen the Elvis movie with the uh, oh, yeah. homeboy in it? Uh, Major or something or something like that. What's what his it? name? His manager that took half of his money, 50% was it. Yeah, but just treat him like a dairy cow. Like, yeah. yo, you live here, you perform here, you don't got to go anywhere else. And I feel like that's what they're doing, a dairy cow. Quite a bit of <laughs> musicians. 100%. Like, but once you know that she's out of her mind, oh, yeah. it just feels worse. Like, if you're a sane person and you're being taken advantage of, it's fucked up and it's, 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 it's fucked up. But there's part of you that's going, I really want this fame, I really want all these other things. So if you're sane, you are... If you're aware of it, you are allowing it because you're aware of it. There are people who get stolen from that don't know. That's fucked up. But this girl's out of her mind. There's She's two dancing s- with the knives and shit. There's two nice. stories about Justin. Let me know what you think of them. One is uh, she, he actually cheated on her twice before she cheated, and then he came out with Crimea River. Oh, wow. Oh, shut up, oh. bitch. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Who are you talking about? <laughs> nah, I don't even know. <laughs> Who was that bitch for? I was, <laughs> I was on your side. Who was that bitch for? Nah, I was on your side for a second, but you just now going to uh, come out with that <laughs> it's shit. It's so crazy. <laughs> because oh. she was looking bad when that whole cry me a river shit and she never once mentioned that he cheated on her friend. Yeah, so yeah. So now you're going to come out 20 years later and say this shit? Fuck that. Also, so how, you don't believe it? I don't believe it. Okay. How That's old were they I when they dated? that bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> how old were they when they dated? They were like 20? No, 17 and 18. They started. Bro, like these are children that are like being stupid. I don't know. I'm like, you also, dude, they had America in a chokehold, this couple. Did, least, I don't know. We were, I, I we were teenagers. Know. You're legitimately too young to remember. Yeah. We were teenagers when they were together and it was like, like, it's the couple. Cry Kim, me a river with Kanye. Was fire, probably. dog. Oh fire. My God. It was really? probably that level, like Kim and Kanye, right? Hmm. Like that type of yeah, level. Yeah, but like yeah. people were rooting for them. I don't think a lot of people were rooting for Kim and Kanye. We were oh, just yeah, that's captivated true, yeah, by yeah. People were rooting for them. That's why they hated Britney when he said she cheated uh, in that yo, song. Uh, Kim K, male nanny. What's this? <laughs> yo. <laughs> yo, come on, yo. I already know how you feel about this. <laughs> Oh, come on, bro. Right, so you, do you know the details? On yeah, that? she's like, uh, she hired a male nanny yeah. so there would be a good male role model in Kanye's <laughs> absence for her son. But a male nanny ain't a good male role model. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> That's a- Why not? But he's an entrepreneur, bro. Hardworking man. Entrepreneur. Taking care of the kids. Yeah, compassionate, you know, empathetic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm with you. What, what's, what's your, what's your real gender role shit? What's your problem with it? You get to molest the kids. <laughs> what? Come on. Stop. What grown ass man wants to babysit other people's kids unless they go molest them? So that's only a job for women. Take Babysitting? <laughs> so, I yeah. Mean, I mean, I'll hear him out. I'll hear him out. You male babysitters? Caring this for a, kids. This is a, to be fair, this is not, this is a I grown ass caring. man. This is a grown ass man whose full time job is babysitting. Yeah. You are crazy. I gotta see is the guy. Is he gay? He gets the, I gotta see the guy. He gets to be around Kim Kardashian and, you know, and all her intimate settings and shit like that. That's, you know. Okay, good, so he's, he's in it for the clout. Good ambiance no. around. No. <laughs> Bruh, a male babysitter, you gonna trust around your children, Al? A male babysitter. I mean, a female one killed Selena. So it's so it's funny that she you just can't trust these. No, that was her aunt. No, that was just like the work of bitch. No, 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 no. Now she like handled. Much, she was like heavily involved in their yeah. their thing. I think. Oh, okay. I don't, I but think it wasn't she, her aunt. Though. Oh, it wasn't her aunt. Uh-uh. Yo, point is. No, it wasn't her aunt. But she was like a super fan that like got to work with them uh, and yeah, yeah, worked her way up. But it's also funny that she's just so bad at having a relationship. With like a male who's a healthy role model, she's like, "Why don't I just hire somebody? Try not to fuck them, and then maybe they." Can. A male a wait, babysitter? Wait, is that him? I don't know, bro. I guess if that's I him. A- oh, that's a problem. No, that's a football player, right? I think he's a black dude. And you just saw a black guy in a fucking jersey, and you assume that he played for the team. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and when I do that, it's racist. <laughs> when I do that at the airport, every so, single time, tall, it's racist. He's the tallest one with a jersey on, bro. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. So who can be a babysitter? Women. Okay. Le- Jamaicans? Le- lesbian? Jamaican women. Lesbi- I was raised by lesbians. Latina women? I was raised by Colombian lesbians. I can tell, bro. That's why you dress like that. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Colombian <laughs> lesbian. Did she just leave you at the park? No, that was the white bitch. Oh. My, my, my mom hired this Irish bitch never again because mm. she left me in a fucking seat, lazy bitch. Damn. <laughs> All right. Then the Colombian lesos got on it and it was fire. Oh, she's a lesbian? I had a Colombian lesbian. Used to cook me uh, rice and tuna. You know she liked that tuna. <laughs> <laughs> rice and tuna every single day. But I'm t- uh, yeah, male babies are no, I had a male babysitter once and I had to sit down with my parents after that shit. I was like, what are we doing, yo? <laughs> I sit, I sat them down. He left, the door closed. I said, yo, sit down. What are we doing, yo? He was Y'all trying to get me bagosh. fucked? Yeah. 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 Y'all try, if I didn't have my Oshkosh bagash, it would have been on. <laughs> it was too difficult to unsnap the shoulders. <laughs> I was luckily in my Oshkosh bagash. <laughs> Apparently, Kanye has been cool with him. Wait, but why they played would you two on two a basketball. female babysitter is going to fuck the kids? They not going to fuck <laughs> Why? And if they are, that's what, uh, it's that's what less. I'm thinking. It's less. Uh, it's less. You just, yeah, it's a head start. It's less. Yeah. It's less. <laughs> it's less. Do we know where uh, Ghislaine Maxwell is right now? It's less. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's less. Bro. She's still alive. Streets ain't safe. Is, is that the guy? I don't know who it is, bro. We got, we got to get him on the pod. <clears throat> we immediately need him on the pod. Nah, bro. 
Hey, yo, yeah. seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any more, Marquita? Um, uh, did you see the oldest woman ever that went skydiving? She was like 104 when she was skydiving? Yeah, they'd they be making big deals about this shit. And like, then she died four days later or something. Wow. Oh, she actually died? Yeah. But why do people make a big deal about when, that when old people do daring things? You made a big deal about you skydiving at 25. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, but... Yeah. I have my whole life. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> oh, so your point. I see the logic. <laughs> you can't see the logic yeah. now. Fucking idiot. Yeah. You see the logic now. Yeah. If you have body's... 25, you have the rest of your life. When George Bush's dad did it, everybody's like, oh, it's crazy he's doing it. He's going to die. Who cares? The whole reason skydiving is scary is because you could die. It's because they're doing young people things. They're living lives beyond being incapacitated in a house not doing anything them doing anything is cool and then doing something especially like the hell of fragile she could have turned to dust she might have never hit the ground pussy <laughs> that's what i say pussy why y'all waited that long that, that's how she floated do it down when you younger do it when you younger you got shit to actually that's how she floated down actually was the pussy, pussy. they yeah. just opened it up yeah. lips no parachute they went bro. butterfly she, she ripped the clip the whole Yo. pussy Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> i'm just saying don't do it when you old bro get after it like the rest of us when you're young that's soft to wait that old. Like this, soft. Is, this is you getting excuses for when you're 100. I went skydiving. Mm. Been there, <laughs> done that. If Ask me if I'm going to go bungee jumping now. Was it her first time skydiving? I don't know if we know that. I don't know if that's Might true. not have been. Yeah, she might have been a pro. I don't know. She might have gone when she so was seven. George Bush Sr.'s legs ain't work, bro. When he hit the ground, ooh. Wait, what happened? Just accordion. <laughs> <laughs> just crumpled Ostrich. Up. Yo, bang. Have but, you gone skydiving? No. Pussy. <laughs> what? Have you? <laughs> yes, I have. I, I, I would go. I've been a little busy. Someone like, bought pussy. you skydiving for your wedding, and what? you didn't go. Wait, what? Wow. Someone got you skydiving for Yo, your wedding gift, and you never went. Point. Wow. Who got me that? Kyle. Just, oh, hell yeah. yeah. You never went. did one of your fucking wedding I would. Gifts. I would do it. Why? Wait, what? Why? Why would I? Yeah. Seems fun. It's also out of my control. I don't have to do anything. You just lay there, and then a guy floats you down. Seems pretty easy. That's the only Damn, part that seems fun. Getting hugged up to your back. I'm not gonna have a woman strapped to my back. Hey yo, I said no to the woman. Yeah, are you crazy? You're gonna put your hands in the. It was this girl. She's like five four, and I was like, nah. Give me that big so motherfucker. If we over die, there. I want to. I want to die with a guy smushed on my back. It is what it is. But you're like, gonna die. die if a girl's pulling a parachute. Exactly. You can't trust her. So all she gotta do is pull. No. I'll help her out. No. Uh, no <laughs> like no. women are always late. You don't you know, know what, what I mean? she's going through too. Yeah. Like she gonna be fucking suicidal and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta deal with this bitch moping on the way down. You're like, yeah, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. nah. Why did he call me back? It's like, hey, we're getting close. <laughs> yeah, pull it. No, uh, dude. Yeah, you don't want to deal with all that, dude. dude. But I would do you, it. Have you? Fuck no, dude. Hey, would you? No. Pussy, man. <laughs> no. He's a bunch of pussies over here. Nah, nah, yeah. I can't stop. But you, you a bungee jump, though, when you're 100? I'm not bungee jump. When you're 100? No. Why like, not? Not because I, I gave up my, my time. Yeah, I what? feel like there's a window. You're yeah. 100. Once you hit 30, you can't do stupid shit. Like yeah, why are you still trying to, like, be exhilarated? You're 100, bro. You, you got nothing to lose at that point. Yeah, that's why it's no fun. It's fun when you got something to lose. <laughs> that's the whole exciting part of it. So like, then, so if it's not exciting, then you should do it. It'd be easy. For what? If it's not exciting, now I gotta get strapped up and jump off a of shit when I'm just like, oh, I didn't die. <laughs> like, this seems like the biggest waste of a day. I mean, be the afternoon, bro. You mean I'm more likely to do it when I'm dumb old. Really? Yeah, because there's nothing else going on. Nah. When you're old, bro, oh, just you're, fucking. You're gonna be doing Molly when you're old, bro. You're gonna I'm gonna be doing drugs. He's gonna be 100 years old. I will old. be a drug addict, for most sure. likely. For sure. 100 years old, you got nothing, you got <laughs> what nothing else? to preserve. Yeah, I'm exactly. Yeah, your brain's gone. Brain is mush. That's why I tell my parents, I'm like, yo, you guys should just fucking do mushrooms. Why don't they do it? I so, how they don't allow drugs, like recreational drugs, in like retirement communities, nursing homes, it's fucked. Let these guys have something. Yeah, that should, that, like you should be 21 to drink. It's and in there. You should be yeah. 70 to do anything drinking. else. Yeah. Not prescription. Yeah. Tell him about the villages, Mark. Oh, Tell. the villages in Central Florida. Do you know what the villages Crazy, are? Bro. No. This is the, the largest retirement community in the world. Fire. They literally built an entire city. You have to be over a certain age just to live there. And then you apply, you get in. Everyone like goes on golf carts. Everyone's old as fuck. And people just go around and just fuck each other. Swinging. And the golf carts have like different. Uh, they, they got loofahs on the top. And the different loofahs mean different things. Are you a swinger? Are you yeah. gay? Are you straight? Open, gay, wow. threesome. Like, wow. Because they're all over 65, I think. Just hopped up on Viagra, playing golf, Can't smoking get pregnant. pussy. Awesome. Can't awesome. get pregnant. Can't get pregnant. Yeah. Crazy STD rate. Highest STD rate in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So people literally just drive around on golf carts, drink all day. They got everything in the facility, golf course, tennis, pool. That shit sounds cool. They got activities every single day. Yeah. You just pull up. Grandkids can come visit you. Then they got to kick them out at a certain hour because the fucking starts. You know what I mean? It gets crazy. Yeah, it gets, it gets wild. Old as hell. But yeah, I, I think you, you hit 65, all drugs are legal. Are legal. Yeah. You want to do heroin? Why not? Absolutely. I mean, 65 yeah, is young, B. Like, yeah, fine. Right. You got half your life left. 40. You hit 40, you can do anything you want. <laughs> it's fully legal. Once you're 40, once you're old as fuck, like once you're washed and fucking almost dead. Son, when is, when is, <laughs> when is it? 80? When's 80? Nah. No, 70, bro. 65 because retirement. I think so. Like you worked your whole life. You paid into this, this economy and this world. Now you yeah. get to fucking you do whatever you want. You get a pension, a bag of Coke. Boom. On the table. Light it up. I think 70. 70 sounds about right. I mean, to start just absolutely demolishing your body, 80. Bro, no. Because 70, you can still do things. A lot of people don't make it to 80. Most people don't make it to 80. We got to see what life expectancy comes. 80-year-old, bro, it's like, yeah. it, no, you got 65, yeah. and then if they die earlier, it's fine. It takes the burden off the social system. That is true. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah, and yeah. they had Ooh. fucking fun for 15 years. There's other people, that's They had a that's blast, it. yo. <laughs> This that's guy. what I'm saying, bro. This that's guy. a good idea. It's like it's, Tosh had this thing. He's like, we made the age 65 when you died at 67. You know what I mean? We yeah. didn't plan for people to live this long. We can't handle it. Yeah. So we got to find a way to speed up people dying. And what better way for people to die than do blow until you're done? Oh, my God. Is it Tosh bit? I mean, not that part. But he's, okay. the, he's like, yeah, you should retire later. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Drugs, do Drugs. Yeah. I might be all right with that. But 70 feels crazy early, bro. 70? He just, yeah. we're saying 65. I think we're all in the 65. I think bucket. 80 or 75 at least. No one in my family made it to 80, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. Really? I mean, yeah, I'm dying young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By 80, it should be required. They should be shooting you up with fucking fentanyl <laughs> or something. I don't get it. You know what I mean? That's it's a great optional point. optional 65. 80 is great like point. it's in the soup. Great you got to poison the water, bro. You're still <laughs> microdosing at 80. <laughs> yeah. Bruh. Like, run it up. What a good way to die on heroin, having the best time. Yeah. Your kids are there. Like, fuck, this is awesome. Yeah, run it up. Yeah, maybe that's a great idea. Shit. Mm -hmm. You can't do it before that. That's crazy. That's illegal. Yeah, too much to live for. 70, though. Prostitution, legal. Yep. You can get it. You can give it. <laughs> that's fire. Sell that box at 70, huh? Yeah. Set your own price. Whatever you want, dude. 70 is a different country. Yeah, that's sort of a different sick. country. That's a, we're, we're solving something here. I kind of awesome. do like taking care of old people in that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you're trying to get dick down? Easy. 70, do we up. make, do we, do we, how do I phrase this? We do national service at 18. You have to enlist and you can go fuck the old people. Well, yeah, but maybe that's a way to get out of jail time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also that. Hey, so it's like if you're locked up for like a DUI yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you got a year or you can take a plea deal. Suck off an old guy. <laughs> what? What? Whoa, that's wow. exactly what Wait, I was. What? what were you thinking? Wait, no. <laughs> yeah, what were you thinking? Because that's just prison. That's just already prison. Yeah, yeah. yeah but nah, not but an old guy. Yeah, and you're not. <laughs> it's yeah. usually like a young, virile guy yeah, who, who will better. fuck your ass. Who's yeah. dick you just suck? suck this guy's dick. I'm saying the women that get locked oh, up. Oh, okay, okay. And they could basically get a lower jail sentence by sucking off an old guy's dick. Mm-hmm. Yep. That works. That's what I'm saying, dude. I think that's a great scenario. It made America greater than it's ever been. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. You could run on that platform. You would absolutely, because old people vote. Mm -hmm. And if my platform is y'all get to do drugs, fuck hoes. But then they stop getting to vote. Yep. I think once they reach a certain age, we got to stop that. Yep. Because you aren't really invested. You're too drugged up too. No, not even that. Like you're not invested in, in, in the future of this country. Mm -hmm. You just voting for now shit. Mm-hmm. We need people who are like, yo, it needs to be nice for the next like 30, 40, 50 yeah. years. You can't drive either. Once Talk to me on you that. You get the drugs, but you also can't drive. You're going to be incapacitated. You're but then they have to get... Golf, golf cars Golf is fine, is fine but is fine. they should have like an Uber credit that's part yeah. of their social yeah, yeah, welfare yeah, yeah. system. Cool. I like that. So they have a way to get everywhere they want without us. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you don't want to have to... They can't drive. Now you got to drive your grandma everywhere. No, 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 no. We got, we got Yusuf for that. Yeah, he'll drive him around. Yusuf? Yeah, the Uber driver, Yusuf. Oh, oh that, felt that did feel like a little bit Wait, racist, why? right? It's racially charged. Why? Yeah. Wait, why is that racist? I went to school with a Nigerian dude named Yusuf. He drives Uber now. Oh, God. Don't do that. Wow. Wait, why is that bad? Wow, bro. Don't do that. It's not making it any better. Florida's what gone. happened, dude? You just won, you just won black fine. friends. Let's take a break for a second. <laughs> let's, let's, take, let's take a break for a second. What the hell, dude? Come on. Give, give me the Shout peace pipe. Shout out Pass bro. me the peace pipe. All right, we're back. Uh, let's do it. Let's have the conversation. Israel-Palestine. Um, it's been a little more than two weeks since the terrorist attack by Hamas, October 7th. And, um, I know a lot of people have been reaching out and they're like, Hey, when are you going to talk about this? When are you going to talk about this? I learned something 
in the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, and uh, it confirmed this quote that exists. This quote is, uh, when the war starts, the truth dies. And I remember at the beginning of the Russia-Ukraine war, there's that great story of the, uh, the ghost of Kiev. And I got like emotional watching videos about it. Like I remember almost tearing up about this man that gets in his plane after not serving in the military for 20 years. And he hits this guy as he starts taking out these Russian jets and the news was covering it. Every Instagram was covering it. There's YouTube stories about it. And then a week later, it turns out it's not true. And I think that we've learned that, uh, you know, when the war starts, the truth ends up dying, at least on our social feeds over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I didn't knee jerk jump to, you know, saying, hey, let's let's talk about this and give our opinion and stay at one. We're obviously fucking comedians. We're not going to solve a geopolitical crisis that's been going on for 70 fucking years. But also because we're reacting emotionally to these things that we don't know exactly if they're true or not. Right. right? Like, and... I mean, you saw it. You even see it with the hospital bombing. Like we, to this day, still don't know exactly what the fuck happened. Yeah. You know, both sides are obviously claiming the other side. Both sides are obviously using tons of propaganda to support their positions. And I think that what a lot of people are going through over the last couple of weeks, uh, especially people who are like one... Um, one 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 bit removed from it. Like obviously if you're Israeli, you're Jewish, you're locked in your passion. If you're Palestinian, you're locked in your passion. But those of us who aren't either, I think what we've been going through is just like, what the fuck is true? Yeah. What the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting all this information on my feed and I'm reacting to it. And then I'm finding out two hours later, oh, that was actually a picture from Kosovo. And you're like, what, what is, what is happening here? And uh, I think, I think it took some time and I just want to like talk to some Jewish friends. I want to talk to some Palestinian friends. I just want to understand what both uh, groups were feeling. And um, I understand now how unbelievably isolating it is to be both of them in this scenario. So like, let's just take, for example, the Jews, right? You're a Western Jew. You're raised your entire life with the with your history, with the stories of your victimization and your oppression, right? Jews have been kicked out of every single fucking country they've ever been in. I mean, like literally you go to a country, even on this, this tour, I'd be doing some research of the city we're in. And then I just come across the date that the Jews were kicked out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh shit, King George did it to the fucking Jews in the year 1000 or whatever in England. I didn't even know that happened. It, like every single country. So you're, you're listening to this information. You're as a Western Jew, you're hearing about it. Um, your grandparents, your private grandparents survived the Holocaust. 100%. Who tells you about it? 100%. The, people are going to try to exterminate us. 100%. They're telling you this constantly. They're saying, hey, you're different. And just to let you know, it could happen again. We got to be very careful. You got to be on your P's and Q's. And you're a Western Jew that grows up in fucking New York. You grow up in LA or something. You're like, I'm just American. Yeah. I'm like a white kid from America. What are they talking about? Like you hear about the anti-Semitism that will pop up sometimes, but you're like, I'm American. This is my parents. That was like my parents' time. And then October 7th happens, um, disgusting act of terror from Hamas, terrorist organization um, in, uh, uh, in Gaza and uh, kills over a thousand Jews. And you think the reaction is gonna be empathy and sympathy and concern for you and what your people just went through this disgusting act. But all of a sudden you see the next day there are like people in the streets seemingly like excited about it. Mm -hmm. And there are sections, there's not everybody, but there are people that are like chanting horribly anti-Semitic things. Yeah, truly anti-Semitic things. 100%. And that's not everybody, of course, but there, are, there are documented section, sections of the people that were but doing it. But enough that it confirms. All of a sudden, that voice that you quieted your whole life, because you were like, that's just my grandparents being crazy. You're like, holy shit, is it true? This is a worst case scenario. We are different. They, they are out us. for us. They do hate us. And they hate us because we're Jewish. That's the conclusion yes. that you would logically come to. They want to exterminate us. They want us gone, right? You hear these chants. So I understand what a Jewish person feels like in that moment, especially a Western Jewish person who is somewhat removed from the conflict. Obviously, everybody there has family members, family members who have lost their lives. You're aware of it, but you're living in the West, right? And you hear this thing and you're like, oh my God, it is true. It is true. We are different and people are out to get us. Shit, when we were in fucking... Uh, Amsterdam, tell the story. You guys are walking around at night. Yeah, walking down the street, and then this dude like comes out to Dove, and he's like hammered walking through the streets of Amsterdam. And he just seemed like a regular dude. He was like fist bumping everyone, like being all fun. And he looks at Dove, and he's like, oh, where, where are you from? And Dove was like, oh, I'm Moroccan. He's like, are you Jewish? And he's like, yeah, I'm a Moroccan Jew. And he goes, oh, what do you think about what's going on? And like gets in his face and like starts to like size him up. And Dove literally is just like, look, peace for everyone. We just want everyone to be happy. We love everyone. And he goes, yeah, we don't fuck with Israel around here. 
We, we don't fuck with Jews around here. Yeah, your and, kind isn't welcome here. Yeah, and, and kind and, isn't welcome here is where it gets like, oh, now it's hate. And then we all step in and we're like, bro, chill. What are you doing? And the guy's like hammered. He, he's fucking in a blackout. And he's like, see, typical Jew. You always run. Like, you always get other people to fight your battles. Typical Jew, blah, blah, blah. And then that was it. I'd never seen anti Semitism like that. Out ever. in the open. Yeah, just walking down the street in Amsterdam. Yeah, you see, you hear about it on a fucking Call of Duty. You know, you see it on comments, but you've never seen like the actual like yeah. hate and vitriol. And you could see how fucking isolating that must be if you're Jewish in that moment where you're expecting the sympathy and empathy of the world for losing over a thousand innocent people. We're not talking about like two armies colliding. We're talking about innocent people yeah. that have died. Like innocent yeah. people should never bear the yeah. cost of this ever. Still right? hostages and stuff. Still hostages to this day. And then you don't feel it. You're like, oh my God, I'm fucking isolated. And not only are they not giving you sympathy, some people are celebrating. Oh, exactly. And that's when I was reaching out to my Jewish friends. I was like, oh, I, I don't ever think I've acknowledged that anti-Semitism is a thing yeah. still. Because yeah. I think we see it like, nah, you're white. Yeah. It's not like that for a sizable percentage of human beings. Also, not a majority, but enough that it's significant. Yeah. And also in the West, like you often see Jews and you're like, oh, they're doing well. They're making money. Yeah. They'll be all right. Yeah, it's yeah. like you guys are like, well, you guys are doing well. But it's like, it's like yeah, we, we go through racism too, but we're also struggling. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't think there is the same sympathy or empathy given to to yeah, Jews. Like Def in, here in the West, it's like they'll call out anti-Semitism for it's like, oh, they own the banks or whatever. And yeah, like, you're like, give me that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How do I get that oppression? <laughs> so I understand that, right? And then you look at the Palestinian side. And... I can also see how unbelievably isolated they, isolating it is for them, where the only time they're ever talked about and their plight is ever discussed is when they're the terrorists. Yeah. So imagine how infuriating that is, where every single day you're living, I guess, in an open air prison in Gaza. Yeah. Every single day there's an occupation. There are, it's not, this is not the first time buildings have been bombed. This is not the first time there have been Palestinians killed. Nobody's talking about it. Now they're talking about, and they're talking about you guys as terrorists, and rightfully Hamas, absolutely terrorist, disgusting act. Nothing justifies it. Nothing that happened before justify what happened to those innocent people right. in Israel, okay? Um, and, and, and an Israeli kid that's eight years old doesn't know what the fucking word occupation even means. There's yeah. no way you can justify the murdering of them, right? But I can understand why these Palestinians are like, the only time the media in the West ever talks about us is when we're terrorists. And what about our innocent people who got killed? What about our innocent people? You don't ever mention that. Mm -hmm. What about our innocent kids? Yeah. yeah. You know, what about what we go through on, yeah. a, on an everyday basis? Why are, do we not have humanitarian concerns for us at all? Where the fuck is it? Where's the attention? Where's yeah. the concern? It feels like nobody cares about you. That same feeling that the Jews felt on October 7th, mm. nobody cares about us. Yeah. They're feeling that nobody cares about us. And then when something does happen, when Hamas is this disgusting act of terror, not only does nobody care about us, now we're gonna label you all as terrorists. Mm -hmm. So we're already view, they're already like, hey, we're victims here. Now, not only are we not victims, you've stripped our victimhood, we're the oppressors? Yeah. While we're being oppressed? We're getting pushed off our land and then one action makes us oppressors and terrorists. This has been going on for decades. You guys haven't and, done anything. And when I saw this, and I'm talking to my Palestinian friends, I'm talking to uh, my, my Jewish friends, I've realized there's this like gigantic chasm that exists with this issue. First of all, the casuals, the people who are not involved in it, right? Let's say the us, we're still trying to figure out what the history of this is for the last 70. The average person doesn't even know, the, they hear these buzzwords, oh, settlements. I'm the average person, Occupation, I don't know. apartheid. They don't get along, they can't have a two-state. Like, they beef. It, yeah. That, that's that's literally what it is, right? And then the people that are involved, every one of them has a cousin who died, a brother who died, a family member who yeah. has fucking died. So they are locked in, right? And I see this chasm, I'm like, I have to understand like what both sides are, are feeling, but most importantly, like what they're feeling about specific things. And the distance between both sides is so far, you would think there are two different conflicts. Yeah. Like if you speak to an Israeli or a Jew about this and you speak to a Palestinian, you'd be like, there's no way you guys are speaking about the same company. If you open your social media, <laughs> it looks like two different. Two complete. Yep. Because like, for example, there's the word that you see thrown around all the time, Zionism, Zionism, this, this idea, this concept that there should be a Jewish state, right? Zionist is used as a pejorative. If you're Palestinian calling someone a Zionist, that is a negative word. Like you say, are you a Zionist, right? If you ask a Jewish person if they're a Zionist, they're just interpreting that as, do I believe that Israel should exist? Well, yeah, of course, I believe Israel should exist. But what does 
the state of Israel mean to a Palestinian? It means you're pushing me off my land, you're gonna keep taking away it my rights. It stands for the oppression, it stands yeah. for the occupation, right? It's like, it's like asking, it's like, I, I, I'm a patriot, I love America. <laughs> a Native American has a different interpretation of my patriotism. Yeah. My patriotism represents the eradication of their people and the removal of them from their land. So if a Native American asks me, are you a patriot? I go, hell yeah, I fucking love America. They're like, how could you love America? You're a terrorist to them. Um, exactly. As a black man, if I hear make America great again, I was like, wait, how far back? It, what, yeah. what, you know, what are you talking about? Literally that, 100%. And to them, a lot of them, it means, hey, we used to have manufacturing jobs. My parents used to have a job. That's the America I'm thinking about when I think make America great again. I'm not thinking about you guys being subjugated, but obviously that's all y'all are But how about. could you not think Yeah, exactly. So it's even the support the troops thing, Mark. Mm -hmm. Like, break down that example that you had about the, like, as an American, we're like, yeah, we support our troops. Yep. What does that mean to the places that our troops are yeah. oh, banging the troops, away at? Yeah, bombed the wedding that my uncle was at. All right. Those are the troops you support? And you're like, well, that's not well, what I thought no, when you I, asked me to support the troops. I, I support the troops for risking their my lives. My brother-in-law that's yeah. in the Navy. Like, yeah. I support him. Yeah. So the, the words that are a sense of pride for one side are the source of oppression for another. How can they even begin to have a conversation about what's going on if they can't even agree on the definition of a word? And both of them are understandably right about it, mm -hmm. right? So, so far apart. Once I'm seeing like how far this chasm is, I'm like, what else is going on here? And I'm like, okay, the problem it seems like everybody's talking about currently right now is Hamas. How do we get Hamas out of Gaza, because if we could get Hamas out of Gaza, then Gaza could live free and everything would be good. It's, it's Hamas, this terrorist organization that's subjugating their people. And every Palestinian I've ever spoken to is like, yes, Hamas is horrible, horrible, disgusting, absolutely disgusting what they did. And that terror attack is disgusting what they've done before and it's disgusting how they've oppressed us within Gaza, right? Every single person I've ever spoken to, just like every single Jew I've ever spoken to is like, yeah, we want a two-state solution. We want them to be able to live free. We want to be able to live free. We don't want this at all. Every single um, Jewish person I've spoken to is like, we don't even want the settlements. Why are we keeping to the settlements? You're just aggravating this fucking situation. These people on both sides- Most don't like the Israeli government either. Bro, yeah. there was huge fucking, uh, like there was like riots and there was these huge protests in Israel before up to, for like six months up to October 6th about how divided the country was about, you know. I went to, I went to Israel with Weezy and almost everyone we spoke to, like and younger kids around our age, it's like yeah. all don't like the government exactly. and what they're doing. Exactly, and I think it's probably no different for like American intervention strategies where it's like, I don't think that's representative of American sentiment. Yeah. Like I don't think if you ask the average American, like, yeah, we should fucking be in Afghanistan for 25 years, that's what we need. We're like, no, we're like so far removed from it. Yeah. But if you're an Afghanistan, if you're a person from Afghanistan, if you're Afghani, Afghan. you're, if you're an Afghan, you're like, how could I separate you from your government? Mm. How, how can I? Like, it's your government that's doing this to yeah. me and you vote them in, right? Isn't it a democracy? And then you just claim like, ignorance? Fuck you. You're taking my rights, you're killing my family members and you're uh, somehow removed from that? No, fuck you, you vote these people yeah. in. And then, I mean, and there was this guy, Bassem Youssef, that was on uh, Pierce Morgan. He had this interview and he brought up an interesting point. He's like, people bring up this thing about Hamas all the time. Hamas is the issue. And he goes, there's no Hamas in the West Bank mm. and Israel continues to occupy. There's a apartheid state and they continue to expand these settlements. You can't tell me, he's, he's basically saying, what is the excuse for that? Hmm. Like what, why, why isn't there this dreamlike scenario over in the West Bank if there's no Hamas, if Hamas is the only issue? Mm -hmm. And I understand that frustration as well. Yeah. I understand that frustration for the Palestinian pe people who are like, hey, yeah, let's agree. Let's get Hamas out of here. But where is the good faith? Show us the good faith that it will be different. How can I believe, if you're Palestinian right now, you're like, how can I believe it's gonna be a different scenario than the West Bank if we have the scenario without Hamas and there's still people that are living and struggling under the occupation? I get that frustration. Yeah. Israel needs to, to show that proof that with the scenario without Hamas, is it better? Of course, but are they still living? Is it still occupied? Is it still an apartheid state? Yeah, mm -hmm. they need to prove that. They're the ones in control. They're the ones in charge. I think it's their burden of proof. Yeah. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think we're here necessarily to offer a solution, but just to empathize with the both sides that are- Yeah, there's well, no way we the could. the biggest thing that's lacking yeah. across the board. Yeah. I think if both, and I, not geopolitically, but person to person, if both sides just acknowledge, yeah, man, what happened to you is fucked up, 
I think they would be way more receptive to hearing the other side. Mm. If Palestinians are like, hey, man, I understand a lot of people are anti-Semitic and that probably sucks. And historically, you have been oppressed. That sucks. Then I think Israelis would be like, yeah, also what's been happening to you guys doesn't justify the terror attack, but you were oppressed for decades, you know, in your own homeland. And that's fucked. I think, yeah. And it's just so hard, I imagine, for both sides to even begin to offer the olive branch when you feel like you're being stepped on. You know, it's like, yeah, it's just, it's, look, again, like you said, we're not here to offer solution, but we are here to offer that observation that there is this gigantic chasm between both sides and even how they're interpreting the same, um, not only events, but reaction to those events. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I, can, I can, can't even imagine the frustration you must feel if you're Palestinian. Yeah. And there's not a peep about anything you're going through until your side commits an act of terror. Mm-hmm. And I cannot even imagine the frustration of Jews that innocent Jews, a thousand of them are fucking murdered and there are people in the streets seemingly like supportive of it. Really, really uh, chanting yeah. some crazy things. And yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And we're not even bringing in like the geopolitical chess moves that are being made outside of their situation, yep. how this is really a proxy in a lot of ways yeah. for what other countries are trying to either stop or how other countries are trying to bring attention away from certain things. Like Russia has everything to gain from America putting money into this struggle, from America bringing warships into this struggle. You know What happens if we start pulling money away from Ukraine mm-hmm. and that support? Then Russia takes that immediately. So if I'm Russia, I want to bolster this as much as I possibly can, fan that flame. Mm-hmm. If you're Iran, Iran, Saudi Arabia and Israel were about to sign a deal that they were going to be friends publicly. First time, I think, in history. If I'm Iran, I'm like, I can't let that happen. I got to do something right here. I have to support something that's going to make Israel behave in a way that's going to make Saudi Arabia not able publicly to sign some sort of agreement or accords with them because they have to save face. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. yeah. And like most wars, rich and powerful people will probably benefit and poor innocent people will probably suffer. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Yeah, it is just, anyway, it's super tragic. And uh, I know a lot of people were asking us to to talk about it. And I'm sure that we'll continue to. I mean, but um, I think it was important for us to like take a moment and really digest what was going on so we could be thoughtful about it. You know, a lot of people reach out, hey, you need to talk about Palestine, you need to talk about Israel, you need to show your support, you need to show your support. And it's like, what they're really saying is, you need to echo my feelings. And that's not what we have to do, right? We have to look at this, digest it, and you know, talk about it in a way that we feel uh, represents our feelings mm-hmm. yeah. on it and is most honest. Yeah, I think the thing we can all agree on is that what's happening over there is tragic. Yeah. Like the killing of innocent people is horrible. This is- Yeah, on both sides, on no both justification sides. Yeah. for it. Yeah, and if we miss something, don't kill us. You know, we just want peace. Yeah, 100%. And I hopefully that, yeah, hopefully that will be, uh, shit, man, at this month, at this point, I'm like, yo, just stop, cease fires. Please, like, please, yeah, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's so tricky. So, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, we get that and then we get, you know, some sort of pause on this. It feels like that's the only thing that's been happening over the last 70 years. It's just pause and pause, pause. And, um, but yeah, at a certain point in time, at a cer- yeah, at a certain point in time, something needs to, something needs to happen. I don't know what that is. I don't even know how you begin to I solve don't, a situation like yes. this. Yeah. I don't think we're going we're gonna to solve it right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, um, that's going to be the end of the episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate you guys. And, uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully we get some resolution soon. Hopefully we get some peace soon. And bare minimum, hopefully we get ceasefire soon so all these innocent people's lives can uh, cannot be taken away. God bless.